Why do I like horror? It's very therapeutic in a lot of ways for a lot of people. You try so hard as a human to avoid being horrified that you don't ever resolve your baggage or your issues. So kind of being forced through your eyeballs and ears to do so is very good for me at least. Peter Lewis, voice of Graham Kastner from the White Vault. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> How is it going, everyone? Um, I figured I would change it up with the intro there. <laughs> I hope that that was good. Um, I did a lot of testing with the audio. That being said, um, <laughs> this game has a tendency to swell in noise volume. So if things are too you know, if things end up getting too loud, please let me know. Um, <laughs> I ended up choking on my own words there. Um, but yeah, <laughs> this is a little different from our usual streams. In fact, I think a lot of you, this will be the very, very first time you've ever seen me play this game, which is so exciting. <sighs> I feel like I don't get to play horror enough um, on this channel. And this is my probably favorite horror game of all time. Um, it is a visual novel and it is excellently written, excellently performed. The music is fantastic. The sound effects are amazing. <laughs> I am obsessed with it. <laughs> it's true, Blue Archive looking kind of creepy. <laughs> But yeah, let's hop into this. I think that you all will enjoy it quite a bit. So what we're gonna do is I've actually got a save file from the last time that I played this. So this was one of the very, very, very first games I ever played <laughs> and uploaded on the channel. Um, so, what we're going to do here is there will be a little bit of a background that we're going to go over. So I'll walk you through all of the characters and things, because honestly, you can kind of jump into this <laughs> completely blind. And I think that you all will still have a fun time. So, oh, and thank you all so much for stopping by. Please don't worry if you have to dip out. I know um, uh, everyone's got a lot of stuff going on. If you need to catch up on sleep, if you need to take it easy, please do so. So, yeah. Um, this particular video is going to feature episode two. So episode one, I ended up uploading, I think it's about two hours is for the first episode. It's kind of a prologue. 
And we're going to go over what happens in it, like the important stuff here, so that you all will be kind of caught up with that. Because I think that, I don't know, this particular episode is my favorite. <laughs> I If I could just jump right into this one, I would. And I realized, you know what, let's just do it. <laughs> Even if I'll do like a little bit of explaining for you all, I think it will be good. So no, don't worry at all. If you didn't have a chance to watch the other Scarlet Hollow video, I mean, you, well, you'll have something to listen to after this. So don't worry. <laughs> it's all good. Um, but yeah, I have so many things that I love about this game. Um, so it is a visual novel. So it is going to involve a lot, a lot, a lot of dialogue which will give me an opportunity to do a ton of voice acting for you all. So I'm very excited to do that. I've got some special effects set up and some other things. So you can kind of think of this as, I don't know, it'll be, it'll be fun. It'll be a little bit of an audio drama. The visuals are gorgeous. The um, story is great and horrifying. <laughs> I feel like I'm just typing this up for you all, but yeah, the way that this game works is that um, it's really built for replayability. So I have played this game at least a dozen times. <laughs> probably more, probably way more actually, because the game at the very, very start gives you the option of picking two traits. And those two traits will help you throughout the game, but they will pretty dramatically change the way that certain events take place Oh, it's exciting. So the two traits that I picked last time are my two favorites. I picked talk to animals. So, you know, that should be fun. Might have some animals we get to talk to in this stream. <laughs> and then besides that, I also picked book smart, which will come in handy as we play through this game. But yeah, I figure what we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of a recap if this is your very, very first Scarlet Hollow stream, I'll walk you through all of the important things that happen in the prologue. So yeah, no, Mellow Mellow, <laughs> you got here right on time. Y'all should really thank Mellow Mellow quite a bit. Um, I wasn't sure if I was going to continue this on stream, but they were so excited over the original Scarlet Hollow video that it made me feel really excited to actually like hop back into this because it's one of my favorite games. <laughs> And I will gladly play it as many times as I can. So, oh, but yeah, anyway. Uh, no, you're all good. You're not late at all. <laughs> We're actually just about to jump into the prologue. So yeah, let me walk y'all through um, all of the different stuff. And again, um, don't worry at all if, you know, there's certain things that like you need to come back and check out later. That's kind of the beauty of this game is that there's a lot of fun replayability with it. So yeah. Anyway, with that all out of the way, let's hop into this. Yes. No, we are continuing with the world state as is. Yes. Yes, I would like to see a recap. And again, I did some testing at the beginning. I think that the sound should be good. <laughs> but if it's not loud enough, let me know. I, I don't think that will be the case. I think, uh, if anything, it's going to be um, too big. <laughs> I think that the, the, the music will swell quite a bit and be a little too loud. So just let me know. Oh my gosh. Yeah, no, there's, <laughs> there's a lot of members here. <laughs> Thank you all so much. I appreciate it. Yes. Let's see a recap. The long lost cousin, the bad news. The 26 hours of bus rides with countless late night stops in seedy depots that would have felt unsafe even in the middle of the day. You wouldn't normally find yourself traveling like this, but your cousin bought the tickets. The funeral of Pearl Ann Scarlet, your cousin's mother and your aunt seemed like something you shouldn't ignore even considering your own late mother's rocky relationship with this side of the family. This is Tabitha. She is our somewhat grumpy cousin. She has summoned us here after our aunt, Pearl Ann Scarlet, has suddenly passed away. 
Tabitha ended up picking up the family estate and is now running the coal mine in this small, somewhat dilapidated town <laughs> in the southern part of the United States. This is Tabitha when she was first greeting us upon arriving within Scarlet Hollow, this small, spooky town that we have never visited before. Welcome to our family's humble estate. Unfortunately, due to the current state of the house, only a few rooms will be safely accessible during your stay. I wouldn't go wandering anywhere else if you value your limbs. The floors have been known to give out. This is Dustin. Dustin is one of my favorite characters. <laughs> Dustin is a darling little opossum. If you might recall, I did select the talk to animals trait for this particular playthrough, and that means I get to talk with Dustin. I first found Dustin when I was opening up this drawer to put away my clothes, and Dustin was very afraid. <laughs> Thankfully, we were able to win over Dustin's trust by tucking him into our clothing, which will almost certainly be full of all kinds of possum hairs after this, but <laughs> he seemed to appreciate it quite a bit. So anyway, this is J Dustin when we first met him. Afraid! Welcome to the Suchi Tomo. Thank you for the gifted memberships. That's extremely kind of you. <laughs> oh my word. This is Avery and Stella. They are the most friendly people we have met in this entire town. We happened to run into Stella when we first popped into Scarlet Hollow. She has this adorable little dog named Gretchen, who is a very, very old pug. I think that Gretchen is about 17 years old, which is quite old by dog standards. Avery works at this very nice, homely cafe, and they are very kind. They've been very friendly to us so far. They've offered advice and just been generally a good person. Stella <laughs> has been completely undaunted by the fact that we're a brand new person to town. But there was something more that was going on with Stella. When we first met them inside this cafe, Avery mentioned. So, has Stella mentioned that she's famous? <laughs> oh, Avery, I'm not famous. Look. If you're not gonna go around tooting your own horn, you know I'm gonna do it for you. Stella sighs. I'm a YouTuber. And just like that, Stella and I ended up having a lot in common. <laughs> uh, so Stella, as she will go into shortly, is not any type of YouTuber. She is a cryptid hunter. She goes out into the woods in this small southern town in search of the unusual. In particular, she's convinced that an animal by the name of Skunk Ape resides in these woods. And she ends up asking you, the newcomer to town, if you want to take a little trip, hang out in the woods with her, get to know the town a little bit, maybe go hunt for some cryptids. Most importantly, keep your mind off of the funeral that's coming up at the end of the week. However, when we end up going into the woods in search of cryptids, we find something else. A single deer ends up startling us in the middle of the woods. It remains behind from the others who have run away, staring down the beam of Stella's flashlight while her dog, Gretchen, whines and pulls at her harness. Pain, rot, decay, the deer says in a strangled voice, only audible to yourself who can talk to animals, and to Gretchen, who is startled and straining against her harness. 
as we try to make sense of the encounter, trying to understand why the steer had such horrible growths on its face. We make our way through the woods, trying to find other cryptids, and we end up running into Duke. Duke is a, <laughs> let's say, a stubborn, miserly old man who is friendly enough, but ultimately does not want us out in these woods whatsoever. In particular, he is very insistent. <laughs> I'm not sure if you can hear bear cooking in the background. That'll just be ambiance if you can. <laughs> in particular, Duke is a chicken farmer and many of his chickens have gone missing. Stella ends up thinking that it's this cryptid that we are searching for, but Duke thinks that it's something else. In particular, he thinks that it is a mountain lion. Mountain lions are not very common to this part of the United States. They are something that is found more in the mountains in the West, not something that is in the South. But he persists and insists that we get out of the woods <laughs> before we accidentally draw his attention while he's trying to hunt down a mountain lion. As he says to us with some parting words, You'll eat those words when I come carrying a mountain lion corpse out of those woods at dawn. Trying to warn us to stay out of the woods unsuccessfully. Unfortunately, we do not heed his words and continue to search for the cryptids all the same, running into not only Duke, who is very upset that we are still in the woods, but we end up running into something else. Come on, you, whatever your name is, grab that flashlight and help me line up a good shot. Creatures in the tree line surround us, growing louder and more numerous. At this point in time, we're not able to see what exactly the creatures are. Gretchen, the 17-year-old pug, starts violently straining against her harness. At this point in time, we're presented with a choice. We can either make sure that Gretchen's leash does not give, or we can grab the flashlight and help Duke line up a shot at the creatures. Ultimately, the decision was made to dive and scoop Gretchen, the dog, into our arms just before she managed to excuse me, just before she managed to wriggle out of her harness. As a result, we were not able to grab the flashlight to make sure that Duke could actually land his shot. Our eyes fixated on the dark tree line over Duke's shoulder. God damn it! Duke did not make it out of those woods alive. Ultimately, it was deemed to be an accident. The creatures did not attack after the fact. There is some information that is not completely shown here, but is somewhat relevant. In particular, the creatures appear to have a hive in the center of the woods where they've been gathering all of the animals so that they can create parasitic life forms on them. Such were the horrible growths that we found on the deer earlier in the evening. As we leave the woods panicked <laughs> and frightened that we just saw a man die, we end up calling the sheriff and the deputy. They are the only ones, <laughs> really, who are able to respond. And they have an odd reaction. They do not go into the woods to go hunting for Duke. In fact, they seem to be dismissive, almost, of our actions. And if anything did happen, they seem to blame it on you, the newcomer the outsider to town. As they drop you back off at home, Deputy Franklin, the more 
stubborn of the two, ends up stating, Stella, keep an eye on the newcomer here for us. Make sure she doesn't get into any more trouble. And trouble, unfortunately, finds us as we try to make our way into town, trying to find answers to what those mysterious creatures were, why they ended up attacking Duke, what exactly happened. Were they cryptids or something else? There was something that ended up showing in the woods. As we made our way to one of the only people in town who was able to find any information for us, a voice ended up calling out from the street nearby. Yumi, welcome home. And just like that, the figure disappeared, with no more information provided. The woman who we ended up meeting inside, Sybil, didn't have much information for us on the man. Who he was, why he knew our name, and why he had disappeared so quickly. Instead, she did have answers for us as to what those creatures in the woods were. My grandmother called them ditchlings, and they are a terrible omen, a sign of great suffering and destruction to come. Unsettled by the day's events, we end up making our way back to our cousin's place, unsure of what to make of all the events that have happened. We've met some friendly faces, we've seen some faces perish, and there are supposed terrible omens wandering the woods. From the relative safety of our cousin's uncomfortable guest bed, the events of the past evening seem like something that happened to someone else. Though you can cl still clearly picture the terror you felt in those moments, for now, you're safe, and you're warm. Tuesday morning awaits. Let's wake up. You open your eyes. The sun has risen. The birds are singing. You are still alive. And for now, you are safe. Your gaze wanders across the room to the window and the woods beyond. You wonder if the monsters are lurking there, right now, just beyond the trees ready to pounce as soon as you leave the crumbling estate. A familiar unease settles into your gut, tangling into a knot of anxiety, wriggling as the events of last night play out in your head. You can't help but remember Duke slumped against a tree, pieces of him scattered across the clearing. You're not sure if you'll ever feel okay again after what you've seen, but you can't stay in bed forever. Hunger pulls you from the clammy depths of the mattress. Let's go check on Dustin. You open the drawers to check in on Dustin, our possum friend. Oh good, he's still here. Human is back! Good morning, Dustin. How are you today? Dustin feel good. Had productive night. I see you have bread now. Yes, Dustin found a bread. Dustin also ate a bug last night. Good night for Dustin. Can I talk to you, Dustin, about something horrible that happened last night? 
human can always talk to Dustin. What happened? The woods are full of big, scary monsters. Dustin understand. World is full of big scaries. When Dustin gets scared, Dustin pretend to be dead. Good advice for human, maybe. Have you met Fru-Fru, Dustin? Fru-Fru is the cat that lives in this house, the one that belongs to my grumpy cousin. M -m monster <laughs> I love Dustin. <laughs> it was nice to catch up, Dustin. I'll leave you be. Kay! You gently close the door and bid the bestest boy farewell. You poke around the closet and see the doll that had been there the day before. Thankfully, the doll didn't move at all during the night. Maybe it isn't haunted after all. Though, after everything you went through yesterday, that's hardly a consolation. You turn back to the rest of the room and look out the window. You creep towards the window, careful not to be seen by whatever might be lurking in the garden. For a second, you thought you saw movement. It could have just been an animal. It could have been something else. Whatever it is, it's long gone now. Maybe you'll head out there and investigate after you've finished waking up. Let's go ahead and text Stella, our new friend in town. She's probably not holding up super well either after seeing Duke last night. It's probably a good idea to check in with her. Hey Stella, how are you holding up? You text. It might take her a minute to get back to you. In the meantime, let's get dressed and head down to the kitchen. Time to start your day. You're back in the kitchen. The cat Fru Fru eyes you from her favorite spot on the counter. Her pupils dilate and her tail twitches. I see you are still here. How unfortunate. Gretchen sends her regards. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to pronounce that in French. I apologize. Say sebere fi toujours. Ooh, I think my French pronunciation was pretty bad. My apologies. <laughs> that creature has not yet returned to whatever vile pit of hell it crawled from. Merde. Truly ours is not a kind god. Have you noticed anything weird around here, Fru-Fru? We ran into these horrible things in the woods last night, and... Silence. Do you know what time it is? Quiet your awful little mouth. Your voice is the only horrible thing I have witnessed as of late. Hey. It's our cousin. Who seems a little unhappy <laughs> with the current situation? Did you know the police called me this morning? You've only been here one day, and you've already had a run-in with the cops. Ooh, lots of good options here. Mm. Did the cops say anything about Duke? Did they find... The body? Body. They didn't say anything about a body, but apparently he never went home last night. And they had quite a few questions about you, Yumi. And before you asked, don't worry, I told them you're an upstanding citizen. 
Mm. That's rather kind of her. Thanks for having my back. <laughs> sure, what else is family for? Mm. We were chased through the woods by monsters, and you're worried about the cops? Yeah, I'm worried about the cops. I'm busy, and I don't like talking to them. What is up with you and Stella? The friend that we had made in town, who they don't seem to be on the best terms with each other. No response from Tabitha. We just have a history, that's all. I don't need to explain myself to you. I'm sorry. <laughs> Good. I've got to get back to work. But listen, you'd better stay out of trouble today. I want you home by sunset. I don't want to hear complaints. Just do what I ask and we won't have any more problems. Tabitha takes a few steps towards the door. Sun set. Your cousin huffily exits the kitchen. Her footsteps fade down the hall, ending in a characteristic creak and then slam as the front door opens and closes behind her. Once again, you are the only human in the estate. It seems you make a bad first impression, no? The cat chuckles mockingly. A text from Stella. Hey, Yumi. Thanks for checking in. Hope you're all right, all things considered. I'm doing okay. Not great, but hanging in there. Up most of the night on cryptid forums, but no good answers yet. I'm at the library if you want to join. I have scones. Scones? Say no more. And that's that. Time to start your day. Let's go investigate the garden. It did seem like there was something there for a brief moment, but maybe it was just a trick of the eyes. As your eyes wander to the garden door, you shudder, remembering the brief glimpse of something you saw from your upstairs window. It was probably just a raccoon, but the uncertainty of what you saw gnaws at you and compels you to investigate, if only to prove that it was nothing. At the very least, you don't see anything now. Investigate further. You wander further into the garden, trying to pinpoint the spot where that thing had been lurking, if indeed there had been a thing to begin with. The garden is peaceful, but undeniably eerie. Here, more than anywhere else, you're surrounded by the ghost of what this place used to be. A greenhouse sits in the midst of the overwhelming greenery, unreachable from years of neglect, its glass clouded and cracked. Statues reach out from within seas of weeds, as if begging to be rescued. And most strikingly, behind a pair of rusted metal gates at the very peak of the mountain sits a graveyard. You can just make out a few of the headstones the Scarlet name carve deep and proud into their faces. You notice what a good view someone would have of your window if they stood where you're standing now. Check the ground for clues. You crouch down, pushing aside the greenery to examine the soft earth. 
a boot print. A big boot print. And what looks like some kind of viscera. Your thoughts turn to the specter from the night before. The one who had known your name and welcomed you back to the town you had never visited before. You snap a quick photo, just in case it comes in handy later. You send the photo to Stella. Look what I found in the garden across from my window. No way that's Tabitha-sized. You head back inside. Time to figure out what to do with the rest of your day. It's time to head to town. The walk back is much less pleasant today than it was yesterday, when you didn't yet know that the woods were full of monsters and strange men who know your name. You stare anxiously into the darkness between the trees, searching for any sign of movement. But the woods are still, at least for now. The autumn-tinged mountains, sprawling for miles in every direction, now feel less like beautiful scenery and more like the walls of a cage. Your phone buzzes in your pocket. Jeez, that's creepy. All the more reason to come to the library. Look who I found at the library. She said she was up all night thinking about the video, adding you to a group text. I'm only here because it's quieter than the store, or was, lol. And I'm trying to figure out what animal that could be. I don't buy into this harbinger of doom stuff. Kanika, just for reference, is a good friend of Stella's back from when they were in high school, and she is the daughter of the woman who is able to provide us some info on these ditchlings, as they are called in the woods. Kanika doesn't believe in any sort of witchcraft or magic like her mother does, but she is willing to help us out all the same. We know what animals they are. They're ditchlings, and they are harbingers of doom. It sounds like they're having fun. <laughs> On my way. Almost back to town. Continue down the path. You make it into town in one piece. No creatures jumped out at you. No scary men blocked your path. The sight of other people is comforting, <laughs> helping you forget the things you've witnessed, as if they happened to someone else. Oh, hey, Yumi. We were just talking about you. I stopped by Sybil's to pick her new tea blend and well. You're the biggest thing to come into town since the coal mine. Folks have been absolutely buzzing about you. You went out with Stella last night, right? Did something happen out there? She barely even waved when she walked by. For this particular playthrough, we're going to tell Avery the truth. Stella and I went into the woods to try and find a skunk ape, but we ran into something way worse. Actual monsters. Sybil said that they're called ditchlings, but whatever they are, they killed Duke and have been mutilating the local wildlife. Ooh, whoa, whoa, slow down. Duke is dead? It's true, I'm afraid. That's awful. H has anyone told his son Bo? Yes, he's taking it about as well as you can imagine. I'll be going up to check on him today, the poor lad. I can't believe you had to see that, Yumi. 
Tell you what, I'm on break for the next half hour. How about you swing by the diner? Winnie, my aunt, can fix you some of Sybil's new blend and try to calm your nerves a little. It's chaga and a lemon balm. It's always helped me on the bad days. And if you need to talk about what happened, I'm all ears. Anyways, it's up to you. See you around, Yumi. See ya, Sybil. Take care now, Avery. I'd better get back to it myself. I'm glad I was able to catch you this morning, if only to see how you were holding up. Please don't hesitate to stop by, if I can be of any help. Why doesn't anyone in this town seem to know or care that a man died? This town has had a hard run of things, Yumi. People here lead difficult lives. Their pasts are full of death. No one in Scarlet Hollow is a stranger to it. Kanika and Miles lost their father, not but a few years ago. We've all just had to learn to live with it in our own ways. As for your encounter with the police, people tell a lot of stories up in the hills. Especially city folk who wouldn't know a bear from a Bigfoot. No offense, of course. But I'm afraid that means that most folks aren't going to take your claim very seriously. At least not until they see what you saw with your own eyes. Be gentle with them, Yumi. I'm sorry to cut our conversation short, but I've got things that need tending to. Stay safe, and God bless. You probably have a bit of time before you're needed at the library. Why don't we swing by the diner? Avery invited us, after all. The diner is a little quiet today. But the air is still heavy with the tantalizing smell of breakfast. We want to warn the patrons of the danger. We were just told that that probably wouldn't work, so let's talk to Avery. You slide into the booth across from Avery. Hey there, stranger. Before you can exchange words, Winnie sidles up a fresh mug of tea in her hand. Winnie is the aunt of Avery. Heard you might need this. The answer is 29 down is oink, by the way. Wh what? <laughs> but the clue is pen sound. How is that a sound a pen makes? Wait, pen like pig pen? Are you kidding me? How was I supposed to guess that? I don't know why you even bother with those things. They're just gonna frustrate you. It's just something to do to fill the time. But maybe I should switch to Sudoku. Winnie leaves Avery contemplating daily newspaper puzzles, returning to her seat behind the counter. So, uh, thanks for telling me about last night. If you really want to get into the grisly details, you can tell me. I won't judge. I could tell you about last night, but what if you don't believe me? I'm not here to judge. I'm just here to listen. I'll try some of the tea. You hesitantly take a sip of your tea. It tastes like you're drinking mold that someone tried to unsuccessfully spruce up with lemon balm. Politely put the tea down and never pick it back up. <laughs> no one needs to know that. I probably should have warned you about the tea. Chaga does not mess around. It's a fungus harvested from local birch trees. It's supposed to be super healthy for you, and it sure tastes like it. It's a challenging drink. We decide to tell Avery what happened last night. 
You spill the beans, glad to have someone to talk to about the horrors you've witnessed. Wow, that is some heavy stuff. No wonder Stella seemed distant. Monsters in the woods? I may not have lived here long, but I've never heard of anything like that happening around these parts. I can't say I like the thought of it. Now that I think about it, when the cops came in for their morning coffee, they mentioned something about going out to the woods to look for someone. It must have been Duke. They seemed so disconnected from it, I figured it couldn't be very serious, but wow. I don't get it. They saw Stella's footage. They saw what happened out there. But it feels like it's so f like it feels like so far all they've done is hound me. Hey, I don't know if it'd help your anxiety, but even if they think you did something, I'm pretty sure they wouldn't bother going after you. Those cops come in here every day, and I feel like I know them pretty well by now. And let me tell you, they have no follow through. I can't tell you the number of complaints they've just like dropped after a day or two. And I'll vouch for you if they try anything. I hadn't pegged you as a transplant. Where'd you come from? Thank you for the super chat. I appreciate that. I hope I won't get nightmares tonight either. I hope you all won't either. <laughs> This game is primarily spooky for all of our benefits, even though I've played it a bunch. <laughs> so where are you from? I moved here from Charlotte, gosh, three years ago now? Maybe a little more, I've lost track. Aunt Winnie offered me a place to stay and a job, and who was I to pass on that sort of generosity? To be honest, it still feels like I just moved in. Practically everyone, apart from the coal folks, grew up in this town. So it's like I'm the perpetual new kid. Don't get me wrong, folks here are plenty polite and friendly, but there's a shared history I'll never be a part of. Why'd you leave Charlotte, if you don't mind me asking? Nah, it's cool. I was having some issues with my folks about my education, which uh, wasn't great, especially since I was still stuck under their roof. When my aunt heard about it, she offered me a job and a place to stay, and the rest is history. Do you regret moving here? I don't think I have a choice to have second thoughts. I'm not going anywhere without Aunt Winnie, and there's no way she's leaving this place. Hmm. I get it. I've felt out of place the whole time I've been here. Folks on the whole have been plenty friendly, but life here is so different than what I'm used to. It's hard to explain, but I just don't feel like I belong. Exactly. There are way worse places to be, but I'm not sure I'll ever feel like I belong here. We're on the case, but I hardly know where to start. Let me know if you hear anything. Oh, and you all have some great questions in chat. I know that a lot of this I'm going to be reading. Um, I have been reading everyone's <laughs> comments as they go through. But to answer your question about where this game is supposed to take place, it is taking place in the deep south. So as far as where it is, I believe it is in Virginia. I think it's actually West Virginia. So um, maybe not deep, deep south, but... <laughs> Uh, coal mining territory, the part of the United States that is horribly poor and impoverished and forgotten by a lot of the world. Definitely. Ah oh, man, looks like my shift is starting. Hopefully the Chagas had a chance to start working its magic. 
The diner is where everyone comes to gossip, so I hear a lot about what goes on around here. I'll let you know if anyone mentions those monsters or anything else strange or unusual. Avery slips out of the booth, giving a friendly half-wave before disappearing into the back. You leave the diner, ready to continue your day. Why don't we swing by the general store? This is our first time seeing the general store in the light of day. A young man sits at the table by the register, too preoccupied with his phone to care that you stepped in. Hey, I'm Yumi. I got to town yesterday. Yeah, I know. Mom told me. Um, what's your name? Miles. What you doing on your phone? Games. You probably haven't heard of them. Tough customer. <laughs> oh yes, that is a thing from the very beginning of the game. We met a very unsettling stranger on the bus when we were coming here who gave us a horrible dripping pile of boiled peanuts. It is my mission to hold on to these peanuts as long as possible. <laughs> I do not know if I will need them later, but I will hold on to them until the bitter end. So, if I wanted to buy some chips or something here, do I talk to you or... Miles sighs. Ugh, I guess, yeah. Kanika decided to skip work today, so of course whatever plans I had didn't matter. Just take the chips, I don't care. Um... I'm paying for my chips, I insist. I'm not ringing you up. Take them or leave them. Um, wouldn't that be stealing? If Kanika cares about running this place right, she can hire someone else and let me live my life. She inherited the store. I don't want to get keep getting suckered into working here just because I'm her brother. We make most of our money on bulk orders anyways. A bag of chips won't make a difference. Um... I'm good, thanks. Have it your way. See ya, Miles! Miles doesn't respond as you turn and leave the general store behind. Head to the library. You enter the former town hall, which is now the town's library. What once must have been a stately foyer has been converted into rows of shelves. Meeting rooms and offices long ago gave way to assorted reference collections and reading areas. This is a good place. Oh, hey, you made it! Settle in with Stella and Kanika in the back. You head over to their table and settle in. And here is our main trio. We have Stella on the right, who has been our good friend since we have arrived here. We have Kanika, who has joined our group. She's on the left. If you might recall, that uh, teenager at the general store said that the two of them were siblings. <laughs> And we have our beloved Gretchen in the middle. Gretchen has been established to speak in a uh, heavy southern accent whenever she talks to us, which again is because we can talk to animals. But not everyone knows we can talk to animals, so that's kind of on the down low. <laughs> you made it! Glad you could join us! I agree wholeheartedly with Stella. I am elated that you're back. Did you send my regards to that foul feline? Wink at Gretchen and give a subtle thumbs up. Wonderful. I hope she stews on that for a long, long time. Morning, Yumi. You look tired. My 
goodness, whatever happened to common decency? You can't go around telling someone they look unwell. You look marvelous, Yumi. Oh boy, some decisions to make here. <laughs> Uh, let's go ahead with the estate option. <laughs> yeah, the estate isn't the easiest place to get a good eight hours. I never realized houses could get so windy. And all those dreadful creatures in every nook and corner. It is a wonder you even got a wink. I can only imagine. That place was already falling apart the last time I was there, and it's been years. I can't believe it hasn't been condemned. Not that there's anyone here to do the condemning. Anyways, I guess we should get started. Oh! Before I forget, we've got to talk about that photo you sent me this morning. Kanika, check this out! Yumi found it in Tabby's garden this morning right in the line of sight of her room. What in the world is that liquid around it? It looks like pus. Oh, I don't know that I want to reveal that I can talk to animals just here. I think I'm going to suggest that it is Wayne, the name given to the mysterious man. Do you think it's Wayne? That creep who keeps coming around my mom's tea room? He snuck up on us last night and called out Yumi by name. And those boot prints match up with the mining getup. I'm glad the two of you had me th Oh, excuse me, <laughs> that's Gretchen speaking. I turned down the music a little bit. I'm glad the two of you had me there to protect you. Whoa. Apparently, I missed a lot last night, huh? I wonder if there's any connection between that guy and what happened in the woods last night. Like what? I mean, I don't have anything specific, but... We do have that whole prophecy of impending doom angle to explore and... This photo is weird. I can't stop thinking about those splatters on the ground. If he's sick from those creatures you encountered. Hey there, strangers. And a uh, literal stranger. Your library is incredible. I can't imagine how much work you have to put in to maintaining this sort of collection. Oh, um, thank you. Hey, Oscar, this is Yumi. You know, Tabby's cousin. Oh, I should have known you were, you were a Scarlet. You look so much like Vivian. Not that I knew her very well. I was still a little kid when she left. But that Scarlet resemblance, it's, uh, strong. Uh, I'm Oscar Gutierrez, chief librarian, and, uh, only librarian. Oscar's amazing. He practically built this library from scratch. Yeah, I'm a little jealous of what the kids around here get to grow up with. They don't know how good they have it. Back when I was in elementary school, all the library had was a couple of shelves of boring books donated by old people. Y'all are too kind. But speaking of kids, have either of you seen Rosalina around town? I don't want to be a helicopter dad, but she hasn't been answering my texts, and I wanted to make sure she isn't getting into trouble out there. You know the crowd she hangs out with. They're good kids at heart. I'm sure they're just up at the old Maxwell place doing teen stuff. I went up there plenty of times in my day, but I'll be sure to keep my eyes peeled. What's the old Maxwell place? It's this great abandoned spot. We used to hang out there when we were teens. 
I can't believe I used to be so reckless. The floors there were like Swiss cheese. I should really have a talk with Rosalina when she gets home. Say nothing. You say nothing and let the others talk. You might not want to let her run off like that anymore though. It's not as safe as it usually is around here. Uh, is that so? Kanika's right, some weird stuff is going on in the woods. That's actually why we came in today. Have you ever heard of creatures called ditchlings? They're a type of cryptid that shows up around parts, uh, shows up around places on the brink of disaster. They kind of look like the Pillsbury Doughboy was a creepy pasta. Kanika's mom told us about them last night after seeing some footage we got in the woods. Ditchlings doesn't ring a bell. Don't worry, uh, worth a shot. Okay, if you were, say, trying to predict a horrible disaster that might befall our town, where would you start looking? Well, they say history repeats itself, so I'd probably try and figure out what sort of disasters this region typically falls prey to. Uh, should I be worried about something? I don't know yet. I'll be right back. Gonna go nab some more books. Behave while I'm gone, Gretchen. Aw, oh, you don't have to worry about her, Stella. You're such a good dog, aren't you, Gretchen? Here, have a biscuit, old gal. <laughs> Gretchen is so cute. <laughs> Hold on one second, y'all. I'm gonna adjust real quick. Alrighty. Well, ain't you the sweetest thing on two legs? Gretchen inhales the soft biscuit, drool leaking from her toothless mouth as she swallows it whole. I'm pretty sure Stella's barking up the wrong tree. Oscar, I don't think you have to worry about any horrible calamity befalling the town. But she's right about the weird stuff. There's definitely something going on out here in the woods. Whatever's out there in the woods has been brutalizing the local wildlife. I don't think it's safe. Uh, I'm gonna try calling Rosalina again. I'm sure she's fine, really. Rosalina's a smart kid. She knows better than to go around getting into trouble, and we'll make sure to keep our eyes peeled. Ugh, thanks, Kanika. And Yumi, if you see a 13-year-old girl with a black braid and glasses, would you let her know her dad is worried about her? Oscar anxiously wanders off, phone in hand. Got him! I just grabbed a whole mess of local history books. Stella sets a massive pile of books on the table and pulls up a chair. All right, this is going to be so much faster with the two of you here to help out. Got our snacks, got our source documents. Let's get this research party started. Reading awaits. We have lots of good things to read. Let's flip through historical buildings of Scarlet Hollow. Give me one quick moment before we read. I'm gonna take a quick drink before we return to this. Historical buildings of Scarlet Hollow. Just the thought of reading a book like this would probably put most people to sleep. 
but you've got a mystery to solve. And to solve it, you need to know everything there is to know about this town. Let's read about the Scarlet Estate. The Scarlet Estate. Inarguably the most striking piece of architecture in Scarlet Hollow and the most elaborate and elegant estate in the region prior to the construction of the Biltmore in 1895. Andrew Jackson Scarlet chose the location to be atop a hill in Scarlet Hollow's geographic center so that it might be seen from the town below. It remains a constant reminder of the family who carved Scarlet Hollow from the wilderness and provided wealth and prosperity to its residents. The Hiram Medical Center, I believe, is what that said, but we'll come back to the exact name here. <laughs> yes, yeah, some of you who uh, are also from the United States might have your head tilted at the name Andrew Jackson. Andrew Jackson was a president of the United States. It is not the same person here. This person was just named Andrew Jackson as well. Something to note, though, is Andrew Jackson is considered to be one of the most um, catastrophic presidents to human life in the United States, so uh, something to keep in mind. It's not someone you would generally want to name your child after. First used as a field hospital during the Civil War, it was named for Silas Scarlet's eldest son, who perished in the bloody conflict. It still stands at the end of what is now the residential district of Scarlet Hollow and has served the health of the community for over a hundred years. In the late 1800s, as the town prospered from a coal boom, additions were <laughs> additions were built into the house and it was opened as a change of air clinic bringing in prestigious clientele from around the world. They believed the fresh mountain air would do them well, and Scarlet Hollow became a tourist destination for patients of all afflictions. The clinic still operates to this day as a doctor's office and stands as a building of cultural significance. Let's look into the Scarlet Coal Mines. The original mining facility is no longer standing, having been destroyed in the collapse of 1918. Though the new facility, outfitted with all the cutting edge technologies of the industry, is in itself a fine example of practical construction, the first iteration of the mining camp was a true product of its time, and what few photographs exist are an interesting peek back at a different era. One can still visit the site of the original Scarlet Coal Mine, though all that remains are a few abandoned tunnels closed off to the public. Oh. This is the sort of thing that gets me excited. <laughs> There's so many things to read through. The Tremaine Homestead. Situated on the edge of Scarlet Hollow's farmlands, the Tremaine Homestead was one of the earliest settlements in Scarlet Hollow, predating even the town's famous coal mines. For many decades, the Tremaine family maintained the largest farm in Scarlet Hollow, but a break in the family led them to split the land in two and the homestead along with it. Despite the many changes made to the two halves of the Tremaine homestead in the subsequent decades, the original log structures are still visible and maintained to this day. They are undoubtedly the oldest building left standing in Scarlet Hollow. 
the Scarlet Hollow First Baptist Church. One of the first buildings constructed by the Scarlet family, the Scarlet Hollow First Baptist Church still sits on its original foundation, though the building was reconstructed to accommodate the influx of citizens during the Scarlet Hollow coal boon of the late 1800s. Attendance has dwindled since the infamous mine collapse of 1918, and while the building may have fallen into disrepair, its simple vaulted ceilings still evoke awe to any who enter. It seems that the Scarlet family was quite involved in this town. They built the mines, they built the church, they built considerable other structures. They seem to for lack of a better word, own quite a bit of this town. Finally, we'll explore some info on the town hall itself. Silas Scarlet personally funded the town hall's construction as the first municipal building in the then small community of Scarlet Hollow. It has stood at the end of Main Street since the Civil War its white, columned edifice withstanding the ravages of the 1860s and continuing to stand to this day a stunning piece of antebellum architecture. After the town of Scarlet Hollow switched to a dog mayor system of governance in the 1920s, the building has been put to different use though the upstairs still houses the town archives and a special ceremonial office for events with the mayor. So the mayor of Scarlet Hollow is a dog. You close the book and put it back. It's time to flip through the veins of Scarlet, a history of the Scarlet Hollow coal mines. Forced into retirement at age 50 due to a war injury from his time in the Indian Wars, exacerbated by his short stint serving as a captain in the Confederacy. Oh, quick aside, not resounding um, good words <laughs> on one of our ancestors. Yikes. Silas Scarlet also lost his eldest two sons to that bloodiest of wars, leaving his third eldest son, Andrew Jackson Scarlet, to take charge of the mine. Under his leadership, the mine prospered, undoubtedly in part due to the growth of the railroad industry. Managed to evade the coal union for decades, making them one of the most profitable mines in the, in the entire country, Andrew Scarlett built the surrounding town into what it is today with expensive stone buildings, a bustling main street, and overseeing it all, the elegant Scarlet estate that was, until 1985, the largest and finest feat of architecture in the region. By the way, for any of you wondering about the mayor being a dog, don't you worry, that will come up later, but uh, I would take that literally, that the mayor is a dog. It's a somewhat uncommon thing, but uh, some parts of the United States find it a funny thing to do. In particular, any towns that are led by animals are entirely ceremonial, and that should generally tell you that the town's actual leadership might just be uh, money and whoever has the most of it. In this particular case, it would imply that the Scarlets have their hands pretty tightly around the neck of this town and have a dog as a nice, fun mayor in name only. All of this that Andrew Scarlet did, defying unions and continuing to spend extravagantly, culminated in the tragic collapse of 1918. It was found that Charles Shaw, 
the co-manager of the mine had loosened security measures to increase production during World War I, resulting in a fatal collapse and the deaths of over 160 men and boys, some as young as 10. The casualties included Andrew Jackson Scarlett's son, Theodore, his brother, Enoch V. Scarlett, who had taken over for their aging father during the bustle of the war, managed to pull the mines from the brink of ruin, thereby saving the town. So this is how your family made its fortune. Flip through Silas Scarlet, Soldier, Woodsman, Leader. Silas Everett Scarlet was born to Colonel Everett J. Scarlet in 1818, one of 12 siblings. He grew up in eastern North Carolina during a tumultuous time in the state's history, and not much is known above his, about his life before he joined the army in 1836. He quickly rose through the ranks, in part due to his father's connections, but also due to a particular ruthlessness, for which he received the nickname Bloody Silas Scarlet. The federal government granted the now Captain Silas a tract of bounty land in exchange for his service in the Indian War, and he settled into the hills of North Carolina in 1841, the land that would become Scarlet Hollow. And there you have it. I mistakenly said earlier this was in one of the Virginias, but this is in North Carolina. But it started as a simple log cabin, built by Silas's own two hands, occupied by his family of ten, Silas, his wife Mary Joseph Scarlet, and their eight children. Logging business brought many workers and fellow landowners to the hills, but it wasn't until Silas discovered rich seams of coal running underneath the entire region that Scarlet Hollow was really put on the map. He saved what he could and bought the surrounding hillside at a great discount, cleverly hiding what he knew about the land's true value. Thus, he had all the resources to found Scarlet Hollow's now famous coal mine. You're finished with this particular entry. Finally, let's flip through some Appalachian folk monsters. For those of you who are unfamiliar, the Appalachian Mountains run across the eastern part of the United States, down through the Midwest, all the way through the Deep South. Give me one moment. I'm going to take a drink before we continue. My apologies. I also thought I heard a knock on the door, but <laughs> I was mistaken. It was ambiance within the game. A few entries within Appalachian folk stories catches your eye. Let's explore the first couple entries. Oh, this is delightful. Look how many we have. <laughs> I love this sort of thing. This is a very nice look into some folk stories from this part of the country. Mothman, a humanoid creature whose sightings are said to be tied to supernatural events. 
The Mothman is a large, flying creature, generally described as humanoid, with glowing red eyes. It was first spotted by a couple in West Virginia in the mid-1960s and was encountered in the region several more times in the following years. The Silver Bridge Collapse of 1967 has been linked to a series of Mothman sightings, and it said the presence of the creature served as some sort of omen, or was a catalyst that led to the disaster. This has since been an important aspect of Mothman, with sightings of this cryptid often taken as a sign that some great misfortune is soon to follow. Next, the Jersey Devil, a wyvern-like creature that haunts the New Jersey Pine Barrens. Though the Pine Barrens, the place where this creature is said to have been born, are far from the Appalachian wilderness, sightings of the Jersey Devil have been documented all throughout the forests of the eastern United States. According to popular legend, the Jersey Devil was born to a woman named Jane Leeds. Leeds, upon realizing she was pregnant with her 13th child and daunted by the task of giving birth yet again, cursed the child in her womb, proclaiming it to be the devil itself. Though born as a normal child, it quickly transformed, gaining a goat or sometimes a horse's head large bat wings, and a forked devil's tail. Kicking at the family and lashing out with its tail, it flew up the chimney and out into the night, disappearing into the Pine Barrens. The Jersey Devil is one of the oldest cryptids in North American history, with sightings spanning back through the 1800s all the way to the origin of the myth in the late 1700s. It's said to move with incredible speed and is recognizable by its high-pitched blood-curdling scream. Next, ginseng babies Roots said to scream like infants if dug up under the full moon. It's safe to say life was hard in the South after the Civil War. The land and the people had been ravaged by conflict, and many turned to unusual industries to get by. One such industry was that of ginseng diggers, or sang diggers, as they were colloquially called, who eked out a meager living for themselves by digging up and selling wild American ginseng. Myths surrounding sang diggers were plentiful, but most prominent among them was that of the ginseng baby. It was said that if you dig up a ginseng root on the night of the new moon, it will cry like an infant and leave blood in the earth when it's torn free. The parallels to European mandrake myths are clear, and it can be assumed this myth arose from cross-pollination from European immigrants. But perhaps on the night of the new moon, you should go out and dig up a ginseng root. See if it cries and check the earth for its blood. For it could be the myth spread not through the legends passed down through immigrant families, but from the unsettling experiences of those Appalachian foragers. Next, the Bell Witch, a particularly violent haunting in Tennessee. 
one of the most famous hauntings in North American history. The Bell Witch is a strange entity that plagued the citizens of the Red River region of Tennessee in the early 1800s. Many strange phenomena have been attributed to the witch throughout the years, most famous of which was the haunting of the Bell family. It started out as a fairly typical haunting, with unnatural sounds echoing throughout the house after sundown, and the appearance of a strange mammal that no one could identify or capture. Unlike other hauntings, though, these acts quickly escalated to attacks on the family, and in particular, the daughter. Elizabeth Bell. She was constantly covered in bruises from the spirit's abuse. The spirit could frequently be heard speaking through the walls, its disembodied voice mocking the family and any visitors, and it eventually escaped to giving full-blown hallucinations to those dwelling in the Bell House. Though this haunting ended early in the 1800s, its activity continued in the region for many decades. It could be that the entity known as the Bell Witch may still dwell in the Red River region to this day. <laughs> Thank you all for indulging me as I take you through a trip of uh, North American folklore. It's pretty fun to share a lot of this. <laughs> There's a lot of really spooky things that have interesting origins in this particular part of the world, some of which might actually be useful for what we're looking into here. Let's look into the Hopkinsville Goblins, small, silvery creatures that besieged a farm in Kentucky. The Hopkinsville Goblins case was a supposed close encounter with extraterrestrials in the 1950s near Hopkinsville, Kentucky. During the incident, five adults and seven children arrived at the local police station, claiming that a group of small, chrome creatures had besieged their farmhouse for hours. When the police arrived on the scene, they found bullet holes and spent shells, but little else in the way of evidence. Skeptics suggest the family had simply misidentified a group of great horned owls. Even so, the incident remains one of the most thoroughly corroborated and documented cases of extraterrestrial contact. The Wampus Cat A large, cat-like creature with a loud, howling voice, often said to sound like a woman crying out in pain. Often linked to Cherokee legends, some cite the Wampus Cat as originating with the story of a woman who sought vengeance against a monstrous cat demon for driving her husband mad. She hunted it down and, by wearing a bobcat mask, tricked it into using its vile magic on itself freeing the people of the region from its evil. Others say the creature comes from a story of a woman who wore the pelts of a wild cat to witness forbidden hit hunting rites. The hunter of her village gathered to perform the rites, and she watched in secret from underneath the cat's pelt, but was soon discovered. For her indiscretion, she was fused with the pelt and transformed into a creature that was neither human nor cat, forced to wander the wilderness alone, feared by all. Her calls are those of great sadness 
and serve as a warning to anyone who dares to go against tradition. Tommy knockers, enigmatic cave dwelling creatures, primarily known for causing mischief. Tommy knockers originated in Cornish mythology spreading to the United States when Cornish immigrants began working in Appalachian mines. They're named for the knocking that can be heard from seemingly within the walls before a mine caves in. According to some, the knocking serves as a benevolent warning. Others believe that the creatures take stolen hammers to the supports of mines and collapse them on whoever is unfortunate enough to still be inside. They are traditionally thought to be impish, leprechaun-like beings, but some claim they are the spirits of dead miners, forever cursed to haunt their final resting place. And finally, the Tailipo. A small creature with long tail, with a long tail and wide yellow eyes. There was a hunter who lived in a tiny cabin in the middle of the woods, all alone except for his hunting dog. One night, after a particularly bad week of hunting, both their stomachs were empty. The hunter spied something out of the corner of his eye. Some small creature had gotten into the cabin through a hole, and before he could even figure out what it was, he'd drawn his gun and fired at the thing, his hunger guiding his actions. But it was quick and ran through its hidey hole and out of sight, leaving only its long black tail shot off by the hunter's rifle. Guess this'll have to do, the hunter said to his dog, and threw the tail in a pot to cook a soup. He and his dog ate well that night, the tail filling them both up. The hunter crawled into bed, satisfied, and his dog curled up at his feet. He woke up to the sound of long nails scrabbling across wood. His dog was nowhere in sight, only a rumpled spot on the covers where he'd been. And in the gloom, he saw two big yellow eyes staring back at him. I want my Tailey Poe, a hoarse voice croaked out from the darkness. Go, go away, he screamed at the thing. But it stepped closer to him, still shrouded in darkness, the sound of long claws dragging across hardwood, accompanying its movements. I want my Tailipo, the creature growled again. I'll get my dog after you, the hunter squeaked, his voice catching in his throat with fear. But there was no dog to be seen. I want my Tailey Poe. Before the hunter could so much as scream, the creature leapt from the darkness, long claws stretched out towards the hunter. No one is sure what the creature did to him that night, but the next morning, all that remained of the hunter, his dog, and his cabin was a chimney, 
standing alone in the woods. And with that, we've closed the book on Appalachian. <laughs> Appalachian folklore. Thank you all for joining me through that particular portion. I know that was a lot of reading through history, but I find it fascinating to read through that sort of stuff. A lot of those stories were actually told to me as a child as well, the Taylor Poe one in particular. I think I'm all done. Let's check in. All right, if we're going with what Kanika's mom told us last night, I think we can rule out any natural disasters as what brought the ditchlings here. But not nuclear incidents. Looks like our state has a history with those. What about y'all? Did you find anything? Before you can respond, a handsome black cat leaps onto the table. Stella quickly slams her book shut. Aw, hey, Pixel. You might want to close your book. He loves to rip up any paper he can find. Pixel, my dear friend, it's been too long. How have you been? Hungry. Did Stella bring the good stuff? <laughs> Don't worry, little guy. I didn't forget your treats. Ah, yeah. Snack time. Crunch, crunch. Sorry if Pixel's bothering y'all. Hopefully he hasn't gobbled up any of our books. He can't stand the thought that people might pay attention to anything that isn't him. Why do you let a paper shredder freely wander the library? Why don't you mind your own business? <laughs> Sassy cat. Have you seen this little guy's face? How could I say no to that? Leave Pixel be. The cat curls up on the table, fast asleep. All right, I'd get her, better get back to shelving. Uh, let me know if y'all need anything. Let's talk about the historical buildings of Scarlet Hollow. Oh my god, you read that? That book was assigned as punishment if we misbehaved in school. It's an excellent sleep aid. NyQuil and melatonin have nothing on historical buildings of Scarlet Hollow. Rumor has it that nobody has read it from cover to cover. You guys are missing out. That's one of my favorite books here. Such rich history. Guess we're kindred spirits, Yumi. So many options. Stella, when were you going to tell me that the mayor is a dog? Ah, <laughs> oh, darn. I was hoping it would be a surprise. Scarlet Hollow hasn't had a human mayor since the 1920s. Yeah, if you were hoping the mayor might be able to help us out here, you're out of luck. I'm afraid it's true. Mayor Jimmy is a rascal, and not to be trusted. What happened to the estate? At some point, the hill it was built on started falling apart. I think it's pretty stable at this point, though. Is it? Stella, you've seen the place. And half of it is still mostly okay. <laughs> Why don't people go to church here? We've never really had a good pastor around these parts. Not as long as I've been around, at least. And I'm not really much of a church person anyways. Who has the time? The building gives off weird vibes, too. And not in the fun, haunted way. Even the hospital here is named after my family. 
I know it's the name, but calling it a hospital is generous. Right now, it's a one-woman medical clinic. If any serious emergencies happen these days, we've got to call an ambulance from outside of town. That's where Reese and his mom live. She's the town doctor. Though these days, she doesn't really see a lot of patients. The Tremaine Homestead seems like the only thing here that doesn't have the family name stamped on it. Yeah, I think they've been around these parts even longer than your family, though they're the Tremaines and the Calloways now. They literally split their farmhouse in half over that schism. Duke, rest his soul, who was one of the last two Calloways left. I guess it's just down to Bo now. I can't imagine what he's going through right now. About the coal mines. Kanika visibly shudders. I get cold sweats just thinking about being in a place like that. I feel for the guys who work up there. I could never. Speak for yourself. I love a good crevasse. Oh. A union busting mine collapsed from poor working conditions? Color me shocked. Yeah, it's pretty awful. That's what the sculpture out front is for, commemorating all the men and children who died that day. Every kid in Scarlet Hollow learns about the collapse of 1918. Our teachers love to emphasize how many children they had working down there, probably to try and show us how good we have it, or whatever. Low bar, if you ask me. You know, that could be what the Ditchlings are warning us about. Another collapse. Writing it down on the list of potential disasters. Yeesh, Stella, that's morbid. And besides, it was all Charles Shaw's fault. The labor market is way more strict now. There's no way you could get away with that kind of safety cutbacks that he pulled. Uh, y'all don't really think the mine is about to collapse, right? Uh, no. No, I, I don't think so. Phew, had me worried there for a second. I hate to give Tabitha any credit, but the mine is safer now than it was back then. Still a horrible thought. You never know. History tends to be written by the winners. Maybe there's more to Charles Shaw's story. Then these dusty old books are letting on. Normally, I'd be inclined to agree with you there, but we're talking about an old-timey coal boss. I'd be shocked if he wasn't cutting corners. Yumi does make a fair point. Shaw was certainly a problematic figure, but there might be other details that were lost to time. Sure, but the guy was run out of town on a rail. And that's not a figure of speech. Back then, they actually tied you to a rail and ran you out of town. There's a big mural of it on the far wall. He got off easy, if you ask me. What happened after the mine collapse? The book just kind of glosses over that. There was a union for a little bit, but it didn't last. There's not a whole lot written about the past century here. Yeah, the Scarlet Hollow mine isn't exactly the most ethically run business. No offense or anything. I'm sure Tabby runs the mines better than Charles Shaw did. Still hasn't let the union in, though. There's a reason she and I don't talk. Oh, we got a lot of good things here. Hmm. 
I'm not sure if I agree with the collapse angle, but the mines seem important. The whole town is built around them. Yeah, that's fair. They're bound to be relevant in some way. Hard to argue against that, but that doesn't really give us much to go on. And just because something seems obvious doesn't necessarily mean it's right or relevant. Stella, what was it you were saying about nuclear incidents? You were talking about the Goldsboro thing, right? <laughs> yeah, apparently in the 60s, a B-52 carrying a live warhead broke up in midair and dropped a couple of bombs. Fascinating bit of history there. The first of the two bombs landed upright after its parachute got caught in a tree. Thankfully, it didn't go off. At the time, the government claimed that the bomb was unarmed, but it later came out that the only thing preventing a detonation was a single electrical switch, which failed to trigger on the descent. And 60 years later, the second bomb still hasn't been recovered. Right, it's conventional explosive disintegrated in midair, but most of the nuclear material was made unrecoverable by flooding. If I remember correctly, they just buried it and sealed it up. I'm sorry, did you say they buried it? Do y'all need something dug up? Because if so, I'm your gal. Goldsboro is over 300 miles from here. I don't think we'd have to be worried about that. Yeah, that's fair. It wouldn't make sense for Ditchlings to be here, specifically, if that was the case. We also really shouldn't be looking too much into this whole disaster angle. Whatever those creatures are, they're biological. You never know with radiation! We actually know quite a bit. It just melts you. It doesn't make monsters. And a 60-year-old bomb isn't going to explode on its own hundreds of miles away and kill us here. You never know! There could always be a whole underground society of bomb-worshipping mutants just waiting to blow it up. I've missed this. <laughs> oh, so many good things. Let's talk about Appalachian Folk Monsters first. So Appalachian Folk Monsters. Hopkinsville goblins were silvery small and traveled in a pack. There's a lot of similarities to ditchlings there. Those are 100% confirmed aliens though. Unless... The Hopkinsville goblins were just a couple of owls some drunk farmers saw at 3 a.m. They're not aliens, and before you say it, no, ditchlings aren't aliens either. Ooh, lots of good options here. All I'm saying is that there's a precedent for this physical description. It's a starting point. Fair enough. Wampus cats kinda sound like they could be mountain lions. Voice like a crying woman out somewhere between person-sized and cat-sized. For anyone unaware of mountain lions, they're also called cougars in some parts of the United States. But they do sound like a woman screaming, and it is very unsettling to listen to. Definitely. They are 100% mountain lions. Kanika, you know there are no mountain lions up here. I thought you were supposed to be a skeptic. Oh, Stella. One of these days you'll trust us. But the myths are old, right? Mountain lions didn't go extinct in the Appalachians that long ago. Those legends just haven't died off yet. Almost every cryptid can be tracked down to either a hoax or someone getting confused about a perfectly normal animal, sometimes both. 
Bigfoot, for instance, started as a prank. Then folks saw bears walking around on their hind legs and got freaked out, and now here we are. You'll eat those words when I get the first clear footage of a Bigfoot. If you manage that, I will print out a piece of paper that says Bigfoot isn't real and literally eat it, I promise. I'm actually delighted to see that some of y'all know some of that history. There's some kind of messed up things in uh, <laughs> the past in the military. And no worries at all if you just joined in recently. It's all good. It's fun to read everyone's comments as we're going through. <laughs> no, you all are very sweet. <laughs> Don't worry. I'm holding you to it. Do you think the Ditchlings are Tommyknockers? What's with the whole warning thing? Good thought, but Tommyknockers live in mines. That's like their whole thing. I'm gonna write it down though. Tommyknockers are literally just the sounds that happen when a bunch of rocks and wood are about to collapse. Are they? Or are they the sound of mysterious creatures pounding on the rocks and support beams with hammers to cause a collapse? There's simply no way to know. Ooh. There's some striking similarities between Mothman and Ditchlings. Both of them are portents of doom. Mothman. Love that guy. There's a whole subgenre of cryptids that serve as bad omens, but the disaster angle is definitely a clear connection. Maybe Mothman is what happens when a ditchling is all grown up. But they're already reproducing. And they don't have wings. They're pale and blobby. Huh. They have a certain caterpillar vibe, don't they? Why am I even engaging with you on this? Portents of doom are not real. Why is the Jersey Devil even in this book? The Pine Barrens are specifically not in Appalachia. Uh, because he's cool? The Jersey Devil is like the granddaddy of North American cryptids. And it's kind of close to Appalachia. Back when I was a kid, I always wanted one as a pet. Stella, that beast would tear you to shreds. I'm all the pet you need. The Bell Witch sounds terrifying. Yeah, no kidding. Thankfully, she isn't real. My mom used to tell me that Taley Poe story back when I was little. I can't believe I forgot that one. It scared me so bad I didn't eat soup for years. I thought a monster might try and dig it out of my stomach if I did. Uh, <laughs> I love that one. There's this old chimney in the woods that I used to think was the chimney from the Taley Poe. The one that was left after the thing did whatever it did. Now I know it's just because chimneys don't burn down, and wooden houses do. That doesn't mean it's not the chimney from Taley Poe. I've camped out there a couple of times, and I've seen some pretty spooky stuff. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I watched your video. You saw raccoons. You're gonna get rabies one of these days, chasing after wildlife like that. What can I say? I like to live on the edge. I have never heard of ginseng babies before this. Oh yeah, that myth is pretty buried. The author managed to unearth it for this book. Get it? <laughs> But seriously, whoever wrote this book definitely stretched things out so they can include some of their favorite stuff. Like, how the Jersey Devil is in it. Have you seen what ginseng roots look like, though? Creepy stuff. Creepy, but incapable of screaming. 
Yeah, that's one of those things that even I don't buy into. Let's move on. Any luck with Rosalina, Oscar? Uh, not yet. I knew a teen would be a handful, but I didn't think it would happen overnight. I'll probably head out once you're all done and check in on her usual business. So, Silas Scarlet. What a revisionist biography. Really glosses all over the war crimes to paint a picture of a self-made man. It's a perfect example of why you should use multiple sources for your research instead of trusting the first thing you read on a subject. Yep, dude was a monster. I'm sorry you're related to him. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, lots of good options here. This town is stuck in the past and built on atrocities. It's already practically collapsing onto itself. N no offense. But maybe that's why the Ditchlings are here. None taken. <laughs> why would the Ditchlings be here now, though? Scarlet Hollow's been like this for so long, as long as I can remember. Do you think Wayne factors into any of this? I honestly wouldn't be shocked. There's something seriously wrong with him. Like, I can viscerally feel it in my guts. Maybe he's sick. Maybe that has something to do with what you saw in the woods. I don't know. I'd buy it. You lean in and quietly whisper to Stella and Kanika. Do you guys think that there's, like, a cult here? Those cops were awfully suspicious last night. Really weird combination of being dismissive and trying to pin things on me. I don't know. It just feels like a cover-up. Yeah, that was pretty bad, but I'm not sure they really have it in them to be part of a cult. Definitely. I don't think they're capable of putting in the effort. The mines are the obvious common thread between everything we've researched. Between Wayne, the old collapse, and the fact that the whole town's practically been built around them. They're the smartest place to start our investigation. Good idea! There's an awful lot of mine-related stuff in my notes. We can poke around and find out if anyone's seen anything weird. Just to clarify, you two are suggesting we go to question some of the miners, right? We are not poking around unprepared in actual mines, right? Right? I yeah, totally. <laughs> 100%. I would never. We don't even have a good reason to go down there. Good. Let's keep it that way. You know how I feel about mines. I promise, Neeks, we're just going to question some of the miners. And if that questioning gives us a good reason to poke around, say, a cool abandoned coal mine, then we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. You can cross that bridge when we come to it. I am not going underground. I'm just messing with you. <laughs> we'll stick to the surface. Yeah, and hopefully we can find out what happened to Wayne while we're at it. Ooh. Yeah, all right, but let's try to stay under the radar. I'm already in hot enough water with Tabitha as it is. <laughs> That sounds like a good idea. We'll be super sneaky. I promise. I can even keep lookout. Look at us, going on a caper together. I missed this. I missed it too. I mean, sure, it's not under the best circumstances, but 
I've been so wrapped up in running the store. I didn't realize how much I missed being able to hang out with you. Though, there is something missing. Reese. I really miss that dude. I can't believe how long it's been since we've seen each other. Have you seen him lately? Nope. I've tried to plan stuff, but he's been too sick. I didn't realize it was getting so bad. That poor guy. You know, we could just pop over and surprise him. He seemed excited to meet Yumi. Maybe we'll finally get him to leave his little cave. Hell yeah, let's do this. All right, let's roll out. See ya, Oscar. We'll let you know if we run into Rosalina. Thanks, guys. I'll keep you posted. Risa's helm stands at the edge of the forest wall, an isolated buffer cushioning the rest of the town from an unending wilderness. Unlike several of the other entries and historical buildings of Scarlet Hollow, this one looks mostly like it did in the book. Reese, it's Stella. I brought some buddies, too. Shh, not so loud. He's still sleeping. Can I help you with something? The woman in the doorway stares directly into your eyes. You can practically feel her simmering irritation washing over you. Uh, hi, Dr. Kelly. We were wondering if it would be okay if Reese could come hang out? Nothing strenuous, we promise. I'm not going to wake him up. If he's sleeping, he probably needs it. Whatever you two have planned is probably beyond what he can manage right now anyways. Oh, no, poor Reese. It's just been so long since either of us have gotten the chance to hang out with him. I'm sure he and Yumi would get along super well, too. Ooh. Wow, you've done an incredible job maintaining this place. Excuse me. Oh, don't mind Yumi. She's just a big fan of historical buildings of Scarlet Hollow. Dr. Kelly looks you up and down. You don't think you've done anything wrong, but she's certainly making you feel like you have. Reese's mom turns back to the house, sighing. Sorry, I know that was a little rude. You just want to hang out with Reese, and he misses both of you too. She sighs again, as if deciding whether to finish her thought. Ugh. He's usually feeling his best around mid-afternoon. Why don't you come over tomorrow? We can have some supper and y'all can hang out for a bit. I don't promise he'll be perky, but I'm sure it'll brighten his spirits to see you two again. And I suppose you can come too, Yumi. That would be great. I can bring a side dish, maybe deviled eggs. Does he still eat those? No. Eggs are a little much for him. They don't settle well. You can leave the cooking to me. I know what he can handle. Okay, I'll bring soda then. That's not... Ugh. Okay, yes, fine. You can bring soda. Nothing with caffeine. Ginger ale, preferably. Oh, and leave the dog at home. Uh, she might cheer him up, you know. They have those therapy dogs in hospitals. No dogs. Why, I never. The absolute gall. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Kelly. We'll stop bothering you now. See you later. Dr. Kelly nods in acknowledgement and quickly shuts the door. The sound of several locks clicking into place can be heard from within. God, that woman makes me so nervous. I remember she used to be so nice and carefree when we were kids. She always had the best stickers when we had to get our shots. 
Maybe she's just stressed about Reese. Or maybe she's just nice to kids. Either way, it's just the three of us. Are you gonna drive? Yeah, sorry. I don't like the thought of going up there without the van. Cool. I'll take my shortcut then. It shouldn't take long for me to get there. You're welcome to tag along, Yumi. Don't worry, I won't be offended if you'd rather ride with Kanika. I'm sure you're probably sick of the woods. Either way works for me. All right, Stella, what is actually up with you and cars? The mines have got to be a ways off, right? Um, don't worry about that, Yumi. There's a lot of junk in the back of my van that gets a little tight with more than two people. I say we go walk with Stella through the woods. I'll walk with Stella. We'll meet you there. The woods are calm and serene compared to last night, though you can't help but get the feeling that danger lurks just beyond the trees. Hey, thanks for coming along with us. With Gretchen and me, I mean. Should we talk about last night, though? Like, actually talk about it. I'm good. <laughs> I appreciate the offer, but I'd really rather not get back into it. It's hard to imagine you and Kanika doing videos together. She's such a skeptic. Well, they aren't really as spook-focused as my solo stuff. It was mostly just the escapades of three kids with too much time on their hands. Still, she wasn't always such a skeptic. She used to absolutely love reading anything with magic in it. And she still does, I think. She just doesn't think that stuff is real anymore. I guess I don't exactly think that way either, but I'm willing to accept the unexplainable while she looks for explanations. She keeps me grounded, honestly. Ooh. Is it just me? Or does this conversation feel kind of stilted? Are you okay, Stella? Uh, uh, sorry, I guess I'm just a little on edge from being back in the woods. Or maybe the exhaustion from last night is finally catching up to me. The conversation comes to a dramatic halt with you, Stella, and Gretchen all whirling around to face the source of the sound. A bird! Let me at it! I can get it! Back off, dog. This is my stick. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Calm down, girl. It's just a bird. The same probably goes for the two of us. <laughs> uh, I guess we're a little on edge. Let's hurry to the mine. It shouldn't be much further. Kanika casually leans against her van as you and Stella emerge from the woods. Hey! Yeah, I'll have a good walk. It was alright. You didn't run into any of those creatures, did you? Nope. That makes sense. They're probably nocturnal. I don't know if I should feel relieved or disappointed. But we're all here. What's the plan? I guess we just go to talk to people. I guess so. I should probably be on lookout duty. I am a bit of a persona non grata in the mines. Tabitha? Yeah, I might have tried sneaking in to talk to her at a time or two too many. And Gretchen makes it extra hard to be sneaky. What can I say? I thrive in the limelight. We're probably less likely to get caught if only one of us is snooping down here. Ooh, let's look through some of these. Ooh, it's actually a good opportunity for me to take another drink. 
Also, some of y'all have been very sweet. I'm glad that you've been enjoying listening to this. I have thought about uh, doing other story reading. Um, I'll have some more info on that for you all soon. <laughs> so look forward to that. But let me cut, get a drink real quick. It's a lot of talking here. If Stella's on lookout duty and only one of us is going in, what's the third person doing? You know those cheesy rom-coms where someone wears an earpiece on their first date? Whoa, do you have some kind of surveillance rig in the back of your van that I didn't know about? What? No. I have a pair of earbuds with a really good mic. We can just do a group call. I take it I'm going to be the one going in. <laughs> Tabitha and I aren't exactly friends. And pretty much all the miners shop at the general store. I don't want to make folks uncomfortable, you know? It's probably for the best, Yumi. Mm. You're good, Kanika. I've got this. You'll do great. Here's those earbuds I mentioned earlier. Kanika hands you a pair of earbuds. We can feed you questions if you get stuck, and Stella can give you a heads up if Tabitha's headed your way. Dang, I've missed doing this sort of thing with you. You're so thorough. <laughs> Thanks, I do my best. I guess we should part ways and start the call, yeah? Stella and Kanika break off, leaving you alone at the entrance to the mines. Your phone buzzes. Hey! Can you hear us? Try saying something. <laughs> You're loud and clear. Cool, same goes for you. Nothing to do now. But enter the work site. You pass through the unlocked fence and enter the property of the Scarlet Hollow Mine. I'm in. All right, Morpheus, good to know. Approach the nearest group of miners. You approach the nearest group of miners, a blonde woman, a broad-shouldered man, and an old-timer. Their uniforms identify them as Harrison, Davis, and Zax. You got a reason to be bothering us? Do you know anything about a guy named Wayne? Yeah, we knew him. He was such a cut-up. Missed that dude. <laughs> what happened to him? The miners shift for a moment, uncomfortably glancing at one another. Isn't that the guy y'all said was, um... He's gone. It's all that matters. Leave it be. Have you all seen anything weird lately? The miners look you up and down. Weird how? Like weird animal sightings? Nope. You been talking to that townie? The one the boss gave a lifetime ban to? Wait, are, are they talking about me? Yeah, she's like a Bigfoot YouTuber or something. <laughs> Her videos are actually pretty good. Yep, that's me, all right. And aw, that's so sweet. But, you know, now that I think about it, it's pretty weird. I haven't been seeing any animals at all lately. Used to be I'd see all sorts of critters. Now it's just mostly birds. This is your first year up here, ain't it? 
Just not used to the seasons changing. All the animals are hibernating. That's all. I don't know. She's got a point. I've been up here five years now, and it's never been like this before. Huh. <laughs> Maybe it's that global warming, then. I think they're calling it climate change now. Have you heard any knocking in the mines? Can't barely hear nothing when the machines are going down there. He's right. It's loud as shit. It does sound like knocking, though, the way the machine pounds through the rock. Not sure if that's what you were thinking, though. You're not asking about Tommy knockers, are you? Tommy, what now? Tommy knockers. They're like an old Welsh myth. Little guys that live in mines and knock on the walls before they collapse. <laughs> Nothing like that around here. Have you heard any weird noises coming from the woods? Not a peep. We're underground most of the day, though. You know, I heard something unusual the other night. Though it might have just been an owl or something, but it didn't sound right. It was an owl. You're just not used to the local wildlife yet. People getting sick? Like, more than usual? Nope, nothing like that. I feel fit as an ox. We have good working conditions in the mine, and our health is wholly looked after. I've got a couple other questions. So, uh, what do y'all think of Tabitha? The miners stare at you, distrust in their eyes. Harrison chews her sandwich slowly. She works hard. She's a good boss. Who's asking? Uh, say nothing. So I met this guy on the bus. Wore a beanie and a shirt that said, I want to. Yeah. <laughs> he said he had some friends working the mines up here. Does this have anything to do with what's going on in town? A lot of people wear beanies. Oh, look, I just figured I'd ask. The guy made a memorable impression. Well, can't say I know anyone like that. Sorry. Actually, that's all. Thank you. Bye. You walk away from the miners, not having gained too much information, but suspecting that there might be something more you can glean here. Approach another group of miners. You stop in your tracks, a shiver running up your spine as an unfortunately familiar voice calls out to you. You shouldn't be up here. It's dangerous. Why are you following me? You don't have to be afraid of me. Stay home. Wait for the week to end. Don't keep putting yourself in the path of danger. That's all I ask. Before you can say another word, the figure is gone. Hey, hey, you, you me? Are you still there? We've just been getting static from you. Wayne just got the jump on me. Whoa, I thought I saw you talking to someone down there. Are you okay? He told me to stay at the estate for the rest of the week. That I'd be safe there. Why would he tell me that? What the hell is that supposed to mean? He must be threatening you, right? The plot thickens. 
Wayne trying to make me leave just means that we're on the right track. I'm not about to back down. Whoa, <laughs> so brave. Heck yeah, Yumi. We got your back. Approach another group of miners. Hey there, can we help you with something? Do any of you know a man named Wayne? Wayne? Do you mean Sam Wayne? What are you asking about him for? Wait, have you seen him? Hmm. He's been following me. Oh, thank God. Everyone thought he was dead. N now, hold on. Creepy doesn't exactly sound like Wayne, does it? How do you know it was him? The name on his jacket. Wayne, just like yours says Smith. So do all our jackets, but if I switch with Isaacs, that don't make me Isaacs. No, no, it's gotta be him. There's no way he's dead. You really think he's running around town, creeping on strangers and ignoring his friends and coworkers? Seems more likely that someone took care of him, so to speak, and is running around in his clothes. The miners stand in silence for a moment, considering what they've just heard. That's not possible. That's ridiculous. This is messed up. But who would, who would do something like that? I don't know. Why don't you ask his girlfriend? Yikes. Do you think? No. No way. Just saying. He wasn't exactly the first fella to fall for her, uh, charms. Lots of heartbreak in that woman's history. Lots of jilted ex-lovers, if you catch my drift. Dang, who are they talking about? I told him not to get involved with her. I told him. Who was Wayne seeing? I... I... Whoa, now, if you don't know, there is no way I'm poking that wasp's nest. Forget we even said anything. Yeah, I don't want to be next on the chopping block. Let's leave that. I won't press you on it. Good. Have you fellas seen anything out of the ordinary lately? Weird how? Any weird animals? Strange question. We don't exactly get out much. What does this have to do with Wayne? Have people been getting sick? The boss looks out for our health. Have you heard any knocking in the mines? I don't think so. Can't hear shit down there. Odd noises in the woods? Nothing but screech owls. That's all on that front, thanks. Anything else? Do y'all know this guy I met on the bus? He said he had some friends up here. Here we go again. You gotta tell us about this guy later, Yumi. Maybe, what's he like? You tell the group of miners about your encounter on the bus yesterday. I think I'd probably remember someone like that. Yeah, he's no friend of mine, that's for sure. Never met him. Don't know him. It's settled then. Your mysterious bus stranger is a ghost. Or he was lying about knowing people here. Or his friends were here for a bit and then left town. Sure, those are perfectly rational explanations, but so is a bus ghost. All equally rational theories. Aren't you ghost skeptical? How is a bus ghost a rational explanation here? 
part of being ghost skeptical is keeping an open mind towards all manner of potential paranormal encounters. Thanks for the help. Don't mention it. Let's pack it in, boys. Back to work. Should we check in? Just a heads up. The only group I still see out there is pretty close to the main office. It might still be worth talking to them, but I don't know if I can give you all that much of a warning if Tabitha comes out. For this, we are going to try and talk to the last group of miners. Good luck. Going around asking questions, huh? You don't look like you're from the inspector's office. What can y'all tell me about Sam Wayne? Oh, ho, ho. he got himself into trouble, didn't he? Why, you seen him around? What's that young buck up to? Ooh. I've heard from some of the other folks in camp that he had a nasty spat with an ex and disappeared not long after. <laughs> you mean the boss? Far as I know, that never ended. Stella audibly gasps. Yeah, I figured he'd just ran off to live in that big mansion with his bell. The thought of a strapping young man like him with that sour-faced broad always left such a bad taste in my mouth. Oh my god, gross! As if you wouldn't fall on your knees if a woman of means showed the slightest bit of interest in you. Or any woman at all. Fair enough. But I suppose this begs the question. Did she run him off? Or did some jealous son bitch oust him? Wait. Are you talking about Tabitha? Yep. Dang! I figured that's what they were getting at, but it's weird to hear it out loud! You good, Stella? Y yeah I just had no idea. Have you noticed anything strange around here lately? All kinds of weird stuff happens in these hills. What sort of weird do you mean? Any weird animal sightings? I saw a raccoon with a big old tumor last week. Spooked me something awful. That's nature for you. Not always pretty. There are monsters in the woods. I saw them with my own two eyes last night. I'd steer clear if I were you. I believe it. Try not to go out there myself. You never know what you're gonna find. Or what's gonna find you. I knew there was something off about that raccoon. Maybe it's time for me to cash in a few sick days. Head up to my cousin's place in Asheville for a spell till some scientist can figure out what's happening over here. Now that's what'll help you sleep at night. Might mean you don't get Christmas off, though, and that'd be a shame. Any noises from the woods? All the time. Howling, screaming, all sorts of fiendish caterwauling. Probably just screech owls and bobcats, you old coot. Might be. Might not be. But I heard something the other night that sent the fear of God shivering down my spine, I tell you. I saw the creatures that made that noise. Pale, hairless, and horribly misshapen with little twisted up faces. The two men stare at you, a look of disquiet in their eyes. Uh, I ain't never heard of anything like that up here. Damn, that almost sounds like a ditchling. 
My grandma used to tell me stories about them when I was a kid. I guess it's not just my mom. Have you heard any knocking in the mines? You're asking us if we've heard the Tommy knockers? Of course we have. We're old timers. All who was here before the machine got brought in know the Tommy knockers. What a nuisance! Always stealing my hammers. It's true. Had a pickaxe stolen too. And when you heard knocking coming from one of the old tunnels, it was enough to make a man pray. Looks like I figured out what to do for my next video. You better not be thinking of going into those old mine shafts alone. I could always use a partner in crime. I'm going to wind up down there with you, aren't I? Any people getting sick? I mean, some of the older miners, sure, but I wouldn't call that unusual. That's all that on that front. Sure. Do you two know about the mysterious stranger who bothered me on the bus? You tell the miners about your encounter yesterday. I've never known anybody in my entire life. How about you, Tate? Yep, never known a soul. This is going nowhere. Let's face it, Yumi. Whoever you met on that bus is one of those loose ends you'll just have to live with for the rest of your life. I'm curious if we can get away before Tabitha spots us. Hmm. Let's try it. That's all. Thanks for your help. My pleasure. If that Wayne keeps bothering you, just let us know. And we'll whip him into shape. Uh, Yumi, I think we got a problem. Oh, no. <laughs> Seems we might not have been able to slip away. What the hell are you doing here? Ah, oh, crap. Good luck. Sorry, Yumi. And that's our cue. Pardon us. You shouldn't be here. This place is dangerous. Why can't you just stay in the estate and stop sticking your nose where it doesn't belong? And what is that ridiculous thing in your ear? Are you trying to record my employees? Are you trying to record me? Tabitha snatches the earbud out of your ears and throws them to the ground. Typical phone-addicted city dweller. Ugh. Ugh, and I have a meeting in five minutes. I can't even drive you back. Okay, look, I don't want you wandering anywhere else. Just stay here for an hour. I can take you back to the estate as soon as my meeting wraps up. Can you please do that for me? Ooh, some spicy options here. Ooh, gosh, oh gosh, oh gosh. I need you to take what's going on right now seriously. I need you to take me seriously. And what, pray tell, do you think is going on that I am not taking seriously? What monster of the week has Stella cooked up inside your head? There are monsters in the woods, Tabitha. I know it's hard to take this seriously, but we caught them on camera. And they're supposedly a portent of doom for the town. I'm not asking you to believe me. I'm asking you to take me seriously. Look, I get it. I really do. Stella has a knack for spinning people into hysterics over shadows. But the only credible threat to the town right now is me not being able to do my job. Thank you so much for stopping by, Sky. I hope that you enjoy your dinner. <laughs> enjoy the VOD later on. 
Speaking of, I need to get to my meeting. Just stay here until I get you and don't move a muscle. We can talk about whatever monsters you think you saw after I get the rest of this day behind me. Tabitha rushes off to her meeting. You stoop to the ground and pick up Kanika's earbuds. Sorry, I wasn't able to give you a better warning. Are you good? Yeah, I'm good. You're interrupted by a sudden movement out of the corner of your eye. A girl carrying a bundle of snacks pops through a hole in the fence and disappears over the crest of a hill. Hey, um, I think I just saw Rosalina. Wait, really? What is she doing here? I'm going after her. Good idea. We'll try and catch up with you. I'm so glad that you all are enjoying this. I'm sorry. I hope this isn't too spooky for y'all. I enjoy this quite a bit, though. <laughs> I'm glad you all have been enjoying listening. You rush over the hill and get your bearings, the sound of active mining fading into the distance. Rosalina is nowhere to be found, but dusty footprints point towards a nearby mine. She didn't. I guess the old Maxwell place doesn't cut it as a secret hangout spot these days. But the Shaw Mine? That place was shut down like a hundred years ago. After a collapse that killed over a hundred people. And here I thought Stella was going to be the one to drag me into an abandoned coal mine. Have teens always been like this? I feel like I really missed out on my risk-taking years. I never did anything like this. Yeah, I would never. Ugh. Okay, maybe I've poked my head in there a few times. Well, let's get in there before someone gets hurt. Whoa, you sure you want to tag along, Neeks? You, me, and I could handle this on our own. Yeah, I'm sure. As much as I hate confined spaces, I'm not about to let Rosalina get hurt in there. Even if it means I have to go underground. Stella and Kanika disappear into the mines. Before you follow, you briefly wonder if you should let Tabitha know about this. For this particular playthrough, we're going to call her. You pull out your phone and dial your cousin. What is it? You know I'm in a meeting! A kid just snuck into the Shaw mine. I figured you should know. What? Are you serious? Why? Why did these things keep happening to me? Ugh, whatever. I'll head over there as soon as I can. Just stay where you are and wait for me, all right? God, I don't even know why I'm trying to reason with you. It's not like you'll listen. I called you as a courtesy, but I'm not going to wait around for you. I swear to God! I'm sorry, but my mind's made up. You hang up the call and follow Kanika and Stella into the mine. The inside of the mine is warmer than you'd expected. The air thick and wet. The ceiling hangs much lower than you are tall, forcing you and your companions to hunch over, legs bent in painful squats as you begin to navigate its maze of corridors. Hey, you made it! I told you she would! 
I just wanted to make a quick call and give Tabitha the 411. You didn't. I was hoping we'd be able to get Rosalina out of here without anyone calling the cops on her or us. Tabitha better not try to have us arrested for trespassing. Oh, I wouldn't worry about her calling the cops. I've snuck into the mines dozens of times and she's never called the cops on me. That's because you two have a weird thing. I'm pretty sure Tabitha actually hates me, and believe me, the feeling is extremely mutual. Well, what matters is that the gang's all here. We'll find Rosalina in no time. Press onwards. The deeper you progress into the mine, the heavier the air becomes. Coal dust hangs in thick clouds around you, even though this place was abandoned over a century ago. Jesus, it's cramped down here. Does anyone's chest feel tight? I certainly can't say I'm one for dark and stuffy places. This seems much more suited for a cat, if I don't say so myself. Yeah, abandoned mines are way more claustrophobic than people expect them to be. And this one's real bad. You know, because of the child miners. Or should I say the minor miners? Kanika visibly shudders. Okay, I'm not superstitious, but if there's one way to make sure you get haunted, it's cracking jokes about dead child laborers while walking on their graves. What can I say? I do my best to tempt the spirits wherever I go. I can't believe you'd come down here on purpose. Yeah, it was all part of my ghost hunting phase. Jesus, Stella. The things you do for your viewers. Did you find anything? I wish. <laughs> if any place in Scarlet Hollow was actually haunted, it would be this mine, hands down. But all I got was dust in my lungs and a couple of false alarms. Stella pauses as sound rushes overhead. Oh my god, what was that? The mine's gonna collapse and we're all gonna die here, aren't we? Stella sighs longingly. That's just how wind sounds down here. You sound so disappointed. It just brings back memories of my last foray into these depths. Every time I thought I'd found a spooky ghost, there would be a very unghostly explanation. Like local wildlife, for instance. Stella turns her flashlight up towards an alcove overhead. Say, what's the big idea? Yeah, we was sleeping here. Shut that light off, you noisy bastards. I am so sorry for my companions. Stella means well, I assure you. Those guys got me real good last time I was here alone. I'm sure you're quite worried about me after my behavior last night. You, me, but let that interaction be assurance that my temper is most wholly under control. I wouldn't dare venture away from the safety of my Stella's arms in a horrible place like this. Oh my god, there are bats down here. I'm going to get rabies, aren't I? I'm going to get rabies, and I'm going to die in a mine collapse. You holding up okay, Neeks? Yeah, sorry. I'm just a little on edge. Kanika is stopped mid-sentence by a thunderous knock echoing from deeper in the mine. Okay, what was that? That was death. Of that, I am certain. That was... I have no idea what that was. Did that sound like knocking to you guys? It sounds like rocks shifting somewhere deeper in the mine. 
we should be careful. Could be. Or maybe it's Tommy Knockers. Okay, no. Tommy Knockers are not real. They're not allowed to be real. Are you trying to give me a panic attack? I'd love to spend some extra time poking around down here. Maybe it's got something to do with the mystery. The three of you are interrupted by a second, much less distant sound of a can being popped open. Okay, now that wasn't Tommy Knockers. It came from this way. Follow me. You and Kanika follow Stella further into the mine. You breathe a sigh of relief as the tight passageways give way to a small cavern. A group of teens turns and stares at you with annoyance. What the hell are you all doing in here? What the hell are you doing in here, you creeps? Are you stalking us? Y yeah creeps I just said that, Alexis. If I wanted an echo, I'd yell into the Grand Canyon. What are you guys even doing down here? This is the most miserable place I've ever seen in my entire life. Uh, this place isn't miserable. It's cool and rad. Who the hell are you, exactly? That's Yumi, Tabby's cousin. Rosalina, your dad is worried about you. And if you ask me, he was right to worry. Why the hell would you think hanging out in an old mine would be a good idea? Is the Maxwell place not dangerous enough? Uh, because no one usually comes in here, duh. Y everyone knows we hang out at the Maxwell place now, so we had to find a new hangout. Which you instantly found out, so I guess we have to find an even more secluded place where we can just be ourselves. I can't believe your dad sent people to find you, Rosalina. That's messed up. I think that qualifies as harassment. You're right, Becca. It is messed up. I don't need him telling me where I can be. You could at least check in so he knows you're not dead. He loves you and worries about you. He's really not asking for much. Don't you kids have school tomorrow anyways? It's fall break. And we're not kids. Yeah, we're teens. Young pups these days. Absolutely no respect for their elders. Are those canned strawberry margaritas? Where did you even get those? The teens avoid eye contact. Miles, Kanika's brother, tries to melt into the cavern wall. Oh no, I know that isn't you, Miles. It better not be you. Yeah, whatever, it's me. What are you even doing down here? Becca's right. Sounds to me like you're stalking and harassing on all that. You're supposed to be minding the store. It's not like anyone comes in on Tuesdays. Mom's there, so it's fine. Eyes dart uncomfortably around the cavern as Kanika tears into her brother. It's not fine. It's extremely not fine. Why do I always have to be the responsible one? Do you know what I would give to be as carefree as you? I left school so you would have a chance to live your life, and this is what you're doing with it. What would Dad think if he could see this stealing booze from the family store to dick around in an abandoned mine? Dad's dead, Kanika. But if he were, he'd be disappointed you wound up being such a bossy jerk. Who cares if we're having canned margaritas somewhere no one's supposed to bother us? I'd love to help y'all sort this out, but can we maybe not do it in an abandoned coal mine? 
Oh, and w what are you, an expert on mine safety? The they only abandoned this place because there wasn't enough coal left to bother digging anymore. My dad told me, and he's an actual foreman at the continuous mining facility, so he knows what he's talking about. Wait, I thought your dad was a charge hand. And no, Alexis, he got promoted last month, and he says this place is totally safe and we can hang out here anytime we want. <laughs> Correction, your father was a foreman at the continuous mining facility. We'll see if he even has a job tomorrow morning. W what? Oh, shit. Oh, hey, Tabby. Kanika sighs. It's probably for the best that she's here. Do none of you understand what a boarded up mine entrance is supposed to mean? It means it's closed, condemned, not fit for human use. Ah, oh, come on. This place is way sturdy. Check it out. The teen with the beanie jumps up and slaps a strut on the ceiling. Oh, was that the knocking we were hearing earlier? Oh my god, Zane, cut it out. You're embarrassing us. I'm sorry for Zane's behavior. I don't think he realizes how extremely eighth grade it is to jump up and hit things. Uh, no offense, Rosalina. None taken. The other eighth graders are totally immature. Not like you, Rosalina. You're chill and smart too. Enough. The damage is already done. Now leave. I'm tired of people in this town dragging my cousin headlong into danger. I can't believe I actually agree with Tabitha about anything, but this is the worst place I've ever been in my entire life, and I would like to see the sun again before I die. Ah, uh, come on, you guys. Maybe it's not such a big deal. We used to do dangerous stuff all the time, and I still do dangerous stuff now. I mean, I don't like this particular situation with the whole ditchling thing, but outside of that, who are we to tell them where they can hang out? I don't know who you think you are in this situation, Stella, but I own this mine. It is entirely within my rights to tell them to leave, much like it is entirely within my rights to tell you to leave. What was your, was your lifetime ban from my mind's not a clear enough message for you? Hell yeah, Tabitha. Tear that sad 20-something to shreds. Hey, I'm defending you. I'm not sad. Where'd you get that idea? My Stella can't possibly be sad with me around. How absolutely rude. These pups need to learn some manners. Uh, running a clickbaity YouTube channel where you run around in the woods chasing nothing is extremely sad. So she's sad. So what? Give it a few years and you'll be sad too. The passage of time is inescapable. Look, we, we just wanted to give Rosalina a good time. Her home life sucks right now. Y yeah, tell them about where you have to sleep, Rosalina. We've been living in the library for the last couple of weeks. Dad says we can't stay at our house. They've got a hot plate and a couple of cots in one of the back rooms. It's actually a pretty sick setup. No, it isn't, Zane. Rosalina deserves better. I don't care about your home life. If you're going to do your underage drinking, go do it in the woods. Just get off my property. Tabitha. Look, 
Rosalina, I'm sure Oscar has a good reason for all that. He's a good guy, and he cares about you. He thinks that our house is haunted. Oh. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> and I should care because... Because it's a bullshit excuse. I bet he couldn't afford it anymore and is lying to you to save face. What a coward. Becca, I don't think you can, like, say that about other people's families. Isn't that, like, bullying or something? Shut up, Zane. Back up. He says it's haunted? I can't believe he didn't mention it to me. I could investigate. There's no ghost, Stella. It would be cool if there was, but Becca's right. I just wish he would be honest with me and tell me what's really going on. It's like he doesn't think I can handle it. Like I'm still a little kid. <laughs> Sorry, there was a loud motorcycle that just went by. It hit my noise filter a little bit. Oh, you're all children and none of you realize how good you have it. Back in the day, each and every one of you would be pulling 12-hour shifts in this exact mine. If it weren't for child labor laws, the five of you might have some actual character. I'm sorry, breaking character for a bit, Tabitha. <laughs> alright, alright. Getting back into it, getting back into it. Exactly! Rosalina's not that mature anyways. She still sleeps with stuffed animals. That doesn't mean she's not mature. I still have pork chop, you know. I rest my case. W wait, w what did you say about child labor? At this rate, I'd be surprised if your house wasn't haunted. I've seen some real bad things in this town. Even if it wasn't a ghost, it doesn't mean Oscar is lying to you. Ugh, why are all the adults in this town such weirdos? There is no ghost. There's no such thing as ghosts. Oscar is just lying. Yo, what if we break in and ghost bust the place anyways? Just to be sure. Oh my god, Zane. You can't ghost bust if there is no ghost. Also, Rosalina lives there. She can't break into her own house. There's no ghost that you know of. I bet we could figure out to bust it if it's actually real. And if it isn't real, well, problem solved. You know, um, Rosalina, you could always stay over at my place until Stella ghost busts your place. We have a finished basement with a pull-out couch. Why are we talking about this like it's a thing? It's not a thing. There is no ghost. I don't care. And I can't believe I ever wasted this much time trying to argue with children. I'm washing my hands of this and calling the cops. Feel free to leave before they show up. You hear that, Miles? We're leaving. I suggest the rest of you kids leave this empty mine before someone gets a black lung or gets crushed by rocks or meets any of the one many terrible fates people tend to meet in abandoned mines. Kanika is interrupted by a pair of thunderous knocks. That wasn't me, I swear. Then what was it? Come on, Stella, don't you have a whole list of perfectly natural explanations for scary mind noises? It's Tommy Knockers, for sure. I know this isn't why we came down here, but we've got to check it out. Stella! I know, I know, but weird stuff's been happening around here the past few days. What if this is our chance to get an actual solid lead? The stakes couldn't be higher. Do you have no sense of self-preservation? I want you out of here, Stella. Ah, uh, come on, Tabby. You can come along, too. 
If you guys are going after something spooky, count me in. Nobody is going deeper into the mine. Nobody is staying in the mine. You are all leaving. Please listen to Tabitha before my heart gives out. It'll be fun, Neeks. It will not. W wait a second. Where did three of you run off to? Are you kidding me? Unbelievable. Wow, Kanika, maybe if you weren't still scared of the dark or whatever, you would have noticed them sneak off. I noticed them sneak off and like, I've been zoning out the whole time we've been here. Oh, they must have squeezed through that child-sized tunnel. Dang, I've always wondered where that goes. I've never been able to get these hips through there. It's probably for the best, dear. Stella, stop sneaking into my minds. Please, I'm literally begging you. If only all the tunnels down here were wide enough for adults, so we could already be done with this little mess. But no, they just have to be remnants from a bygone era. Uh, didn't you just talk about how child life? How <laughs> Didn't you just talk about how child labor was the good old days a minute ago? I was trying to get you to leave my mine. Becca's head pops out from the tunnel's entrance. We are not about to let you come in here and ruin our good time. The mine is safe. I've been here a million times. Yeah, if Becca says we're safe, then we're totally safe. Uh, I just... Uh, whatever. Come on, you two. I know a cool spot this way. Okay, I think I know where that tunnel rejoins with the rest of the mines. I'll go look for them. I want each and every one of you to take note of the fact that I am doing that. If those idiots get themselves lost and die, I am not letting their families sue me into the ground. Are... are those really your priorities right now? Yeah, do you have a problem with that? I want the rest of you out of my mind. Except for you, Yumi. I'm not letting you out of my sight. Yeah, sure. I can never fit in that tunnel anyways. They have crossed a barrier that I cannot. So my time here is up. But only because Stella promised me a ghost hunt tomorrow. Whatever. I still have my dailies anyway. And the service down here sucks. I will happily escort these two knuckleheads out. No. No, Stella, you are not about to weasel your way into this. Ah, come on, Tabby. I've been down here a ton. I can totally help out. Tabitha sighs. Ugh, there's no getting rid of you, is there? Fine. I won't waste my time arguing. I've read a lot of stories about cave rescuers needing their own rescues. Are we biting off more than we can chew? Should we get some professionals down here? I am a professional. I'd also prefer to resolve this issue without word getting out if possible. Again, I don't want to deal with angry parents trying to sue me for their own negligence. Inspiring. Ah, uh, don't worry, Yumi, it'll be fun and safe. I'm sure that's exactly what you told her last night, and we all know how that ended. Tabitha, don't push Stella away like that. She hasn't done anything to deserve it. Ugh, not you too. I said she could tag along, didn't I? What's the big deal? It's all right, Yumi. Tabby's just a bit of a curmudgeon. Ugh. All right, let's do this. Sure. 
Well, let's not linger any longer than we have to, shall we? Want me to take Gretchen with me? I don't know if it'll be easier to cover more ground without her. Excuse me, I am a formidable and self-sufficient monster hunting companion. <laughs> yeah, that's probably for the best. I don't want a repeat of last night, and who knows if we'll have to do any climbing. I'll see you on the other side. Hopefully soon. For sure, we won't be too long. Cool! Can't wait to go so... so <laughs> Excuse me, tongue-tied there. Can't wait to bust some ghosts tomorrow. Kanika, Miles, and Zane head towards the entrance of the mines, leaving you, Tabitha, and Stella to find the remaining teens. All right, no dawdling. We should be able to catch up with them if we go this way. You and Stella exchange a glance as Tabitha ventures forward. As the three of you move deeper into the mine, you hear echoes of conversation across the walls. Be Becca, why are we doing this again? I, I thought Tabitha was like really cool. Why are you trying to get her all mad? Ugh, we're doing this because Tabitha is really cool. She doesn't let anyone boss her around, so we can't just let her boss us around. Ah, you hear that, Tabby? Someone thinks you're cool. I can't believe she used to hang out with a nobody like Stella. <laughs> Poor Stella. Hey. I, I, I don't know. I think Stella's kind of cool. Her videos are really neat. Oh, come on. She doesn't even have a sponsor. <laughs> what kind of YouTuber doesn't have a sponsor? Oof. <laughs> I mean, not yet, but I'm in talks with Meat Rice TM, and I make plenty from ads and donations. Dang, Stella, Meat Rice? That's a big deal. They're on, like, every big podcast. Thank you, thank you. It feels like a really big step for the channel. I just wish Becca hadn't said all that stuff she'd said tonight. She's just mean. It has nothing to do with you. You've seen how she's treated everyone tonight, except for Tabitha. <laughs> yeah, I guess you're right. It's true. YouTubers don't need sponsors. <laughs> just trying to go for the, the gut of this, this poor cryptid YouTuber over here. I'm surprised you don't have thicker skin about this, Stella. You never struck me as someone who let other people's opinions bother you. If you did, I wouldn't have to try so hard to keep you off my property. Well, I know you don't mean it. Agree to disagree. How does it feel to have a teen girl think you're cool, Tabitha? I feel nothing about it. The opinions of children don't interest me. I don't know. <laughs> you kind of hesitated there. You're reading into things that aren't there, Stella. Just because your livelihood revolves around what people think of you doesn't mean that I care of what people think of me. Congratulations on your sponsor, though. Press onward. <laughs> it's true, the viewers are the sponsors. Another knock, closer, interrupts your thoughts followed by another and another. Is that just me? Or is that knocking coming from the same direction as those kids? It's not just you. Oh, okay, this knocking is starting to freak me out. Calm down, Rosalina. It's just mine sounds. Did, did you guys see that? No, no, it was just a shadow. There's no reason to get freaked out. I saw it. Shut up. There's nothing down here. Stop trying to scare me. That sounds just the act of mine echoing through the walls, right? Nah, it's Tommyknockers. I'm sure of it. It's not Tommyknockers. 
That being said, it's also definitely not the active mine. We use a machine these days, and it sounds nothing like that. It's probably just rocks falling somewhere deeper in the mine, which is also bad for obvious reasons. Are we sure the tunnel they went through is going to meet back up with us? Yes, I am familiar with all the old maps of this place. There should be a central chamber not too far from here where everything joins back up. Those poor kids. I have no sympathies for their terror. They brought this upon themselves for trespassing in my mine and making me come down here. I'm sure they're just as upset you came down here as you are. We're getting closer. Let's keep moving. As you progress further into the mine, the knocking grows more frequent. It's still distant, but it's much louder than before. The tunnel ends abruptly in front of you. A century-old ladder is the only way forward. In the darkness beyond, you can still hear the echoes of terrified teens. They're panicked, arguing, bouncing down the pitch-black corridors. And the, here we are. The tunnel they crawled down passes through the chamber below. It shouldn't be hard to find them once we get down there. I've never been this far in. Congratulations, Stella. You got what you wanted. Tabitha crawls up to the ladder and disappears over the edge. All right, let's do this. Stella hoists herself over the edge and begins to climb down. Follow them down into the pit. I'm pretty sure this is the way back. Come on! Pretty sure? I thought you'd been down here before. Okay, maybe I didn't get this far in, but whatever, it doesn't matter. I definitely remember the way out. Hurry, I don't want to be down here anymore. I, I think it was actually this way. Oh, shut up. No one even wanted you to come with us anyway. Becca. Yep, they're close, all right. Good thing they're so damn loud. It sounds like they're really lost. The voices around you, those of the teens and your companions sound odd, distant. There is something in the darkness before you that's much louder, though you don't hear it. You don't hear it, but you can feel it in your chest. A desperate need to perceive and be perceived. Wrap yourself in the darkness of the pit. Hey, are you all right, Yumi? Bear witness. What do you think you're doing? Get away from there! Your cousin dives towards you, but not before the light illuminates that chamber in front of you. Y Yumi, Yumi, are you all right? Oh, thank God you're alive. It looked like you had a seizure or something. And then you and Tabby just conked out. I'm fine. Ugh. You can barely open your eyes. You're not fine. Neither of you move a muscle. I don't want you straining yourselves while you're still recovering from whatever that was. I'm going to get you both some help. I'll be back soon. I promise. 
You fade back out of consciousness as your companion clambers out of the pit, intent on your rescue. You raise up your elbows, head still swimming from the visions, your surroundings coming back into focus. Your head throbs as the knocking continues, now magnitudes more intense than ever. Through it, you once again hear the panicked voices of bickering teenagers echoing down stone corridors. Becca, you're just getting us more lost. It's this way. If you're so sure about it, then just leave. I can't believe I let Alexis talk me into inviting you here in the first place. Becca, I'm just trying to help. I said go. Okay, I will, Alexis. You don't have to go with her. You know that, right? I, I, um, pick a side, Alexis. I'm sure Becca knows where we're going. She, she wouldn't just lie. I'm sorry, Rosalina. The increasingly desperate voices of the teens are drowned out by the thunderous knocking. You can practically feel the ground shake beneath you as, this, as the walls vibrate with the intensity of the hellish sound. God, that knocking is not helping my headache. What the hell just happened? Am I the only one who saw ghosts just now? I mean, maybe they were ghosts. <laughs> no, I, I saw them too. There's gotta be fumes or something down here. It's an old mine. These places are death traps. We probably just hallucinated. The only thing that matters right now is the knocking. You need to get out of here. Rosalina appears in the passageway to your left. She's out of breath, and it looks like she's been crying. I'm... I'm so sorry I snuck off like that. I, I just wanted Alexis to think I was cool. The entire cavern shakes with the sound of rock fall. I don't know what the hell is up with that knocking, but that is the sound of a mine collapse. Quick, up that ladder, both of you! Wait! Becca and Alexis are still down there! You can't just leave them here! I know which way they're going! They'll listen to you this time, I promise! Do you have a death wish, little girl? This isn't a movie! The best thing we can do to help those girls right now is not to be buried alive ourselves! We have a choice to make. We can either take Rosalina and leave, or go after Becca and Alexis. For this particular playthrough, we're going to try and rescue these kids. Okay, let's do this. Yumi, don't do this to me! They're kids, Tabitha. I'm not going to leave them down here. Are you serious? Thank you. They're back this way. Hurry. Rosalina runs back the way she came. You run after her. The mines shake with every new thunderous blow as bits of rock and dust fall off the ceiling and scatter on the floor around you. Rosalina leads the way, and Tabitha isn't far behind you. I, I thought you knew the way out. I thought you'd been down here a million times already. I, I was making it up, okay? I swear to God, Yumi, if we get stuck down here. Can you guys see those things? Like I said, there's probably a pocket of gas down here. We're coming. Just stay where you are. Ro Rosalina, you came back. I don't want to die down here. Then move. Okay, okay. 
You quickly push your way back towards the entrance, pieces of fallen rock littering the path around you. All of you, start climbing. Now. Once the last teen is up, Tabitha grabs onto the ladder and starts climbing. Climb out of the pit with her. You follow suit and start climbing. This way, come on. Your cousin moves with the kind of swiftness you'd expect from someone who spent her entire life working in and around mines. Why couldn't you have just listened to someone other than yourself, Becca? I'm sorry, okay? God! You push forward, your burning muscles giving way to pure adrenaline. To your horror, you can see cracks forming on the walls of the tunnel. Come on, we've got to go faster. We're almost there. I can see the entrance. Your surroundings quake as the mine collapses around you. And then the knocking fades and you feel safe, having arrived back at the entrance in one piece. What the fuck? What the fuck? Rosalina, are you okay? Clearly she's not okay, idiot. Shut up, Becca. It was your idea to go down there in the first place. This is your fault. Shit. Shit. Why did this have to happen? Okay, the knocking stopped at least. All of you stay exactly where you are. I am going to make some calls. <laughs> this really hurts. Stella and Kanika pop their heads through the mine entrance. Tabitha just stormed out of there. Are, are you... Oh my god. Rosalina, can you hear me? We're gonna get you out of there, okay? Stella already called an ambulance. But, but that just means the cops are gonna come. They're gonna know I was drinking. They're gonna know we went in there to drink, right? Becca, that doesn't matter. If my dad finds out he'll kill me, he can't know. In a panic, Becca runs for the entrance and pushes her way through. Don't worry about her, Rosalina. She's being an asshole. One of us should wait by the gate to make sure they can find us up here. I should t check in with Tabby, see if she needs help. We're going to get you help. E everything is going to be okay. All right, I'll go down to the gate. Rosalina, I I'm so sorry. I'll be back soon. We're going to get you out of here and you're going to be just fine, okay? Yumi and Alexis will keep you safe until then. Don't you worry, pup. I know you're sick but I'm here to keep you warm. Am I gonna die? Rosalina, don't say things like that. You're gonna be okay. Just keep breathing. Thanks, Yumi. Rosalina's breath comes in quick, irregular bursts. If I don't make it, tell my dad I'm sorry. Ah, uh, I'm the one who has something to be sorry about. This is all me and Becca's fault. We never should have gone down there. It's not your fault. I went down there because I wanted to. Rosalina pauses, catching her breath. Thank you, Yumi. I'm glad everyone else made it out. Okay, couldn't have done it <laughs> without your help.
I'm just sorry I couldn't do more. If I didn't stick with Becca once we started getting lost, none of this would have happened. If I'd just been smart or more brave, but I wasn't, and now Rosalina is... She's... It's just not fair. You're the nicest person I know. Rosalina, it's not fair that this happened to you. I'm so sorry. It's okay, Alexis. It's okay. Can't believe you're the one comforting me. Rosalina, can you hear me? Y yeah just hurts like hell. Sorry, I, I shouldn't be pushing you to talk. I'll just hold your hand until they come back with help, okay? Don't go to sleep just yet, pup. Alexis grasps Rosalina's hand. Tears streak down both of their cheeks as you sit in silence together, waiting for the long, anxious moments to pass before help arrives. Some of my men are on the way with rock lifts. We'll get you out of there soon. They're over here, Earl. Jesus H. Christ. You weren't kidding about the emergency. It'll still be a bit for the ambulance. The nearest depot is over in Brevard, so it'll be at least another half an hour. You heard the man. You have half an hour to get her out of there. Move it. Rosalina, sweetie, I I'm here. Dad, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. You don't have to be sorry. It's okay. We're all here. You can hang on, Rosalina. I know you can. Tabitha's men quickly get to work and manage to pull Rosalina out from the rubble just as the ambulance arrives. Sir, I I'm afraid there's no space in the back. What do you mean? I can't ride with her? Y you're better off driving behind us. We're headed to Brevard, so it's quite a ways. Is she going to be okay? She's going to make it, right? Please, God. Yes, sir. I promise you, we're going to do everything we can to keep her stable. Her vitals are looking good. Rosalina, my, my poor baby, I'll be there as fast as I can. I promise you won't be alone. I love you, Dad. The paramedics, lead, the paramedics load Rosalina into the back of the ambulance and drive off. Oscar approaches you off to the side as the police talk to Tabitha and her men. What the hell happened in there? Oscar, I'm so sorry. It's okay, it's okay. At least nobody died. What happened though? It was just a horrible accident. Nobody could have known this would happen. I mean, sure, those, but those kids shouldn't have been in an abandoned coal mine. No, no, this was no teenager's fault. It's a parent's job to make sure their kids don't deliberately put themselves in these situations. Rosalina was mad at me, and instead of fixing that thing that was driving her away, I just ignored it. This is my fault. Oscar. I'm the parent here. I'm sure she thinks I'm making things up about our house being haunted, but I've seen things I can't explain, and it's only gotten worse over time. She told us about it down in the mine. For what it's worth, I believe you. No comment, but after tonight... I don't know. Once you're back from the hospital, we can check it out for you. Thanks, Stella. That means a lot. I've... I've gotta go. M M Mr. Gutierrez, is it okay if I come too? I want to be there for her. 
Of course, Alexis. It'll be good for her to see a friendly face. The two of them head over to Oscar's car and drive off. Before we continue, I'm going to take a short drink of water now that we're through a <laughs> pretty intense part of this. Alrighty. Do you think Rosalina is going to be okay? The paramedics said she was stable. She's a tough kid. She'll be okay. Do you think it's over? Maybe the Ditchlings were here for the kids and we saved them. Gosh, I hope so. <laughs> Maybe things will be normal from here on out. But I feel like everything that happened in the mine raised more questions than it has answered. Yeah, we still don't know anything about Wayne. Or about what you actually saw down there. Stella filled me in outside. This is all a little too magic for me. <laughs> Just because two bad things have happened doesn't mean there's a pattern. Right? I'm glad. <laughs> I'm sorry if I, I got some of you all close to tears there. I actually got a little close to tears too. It's a very touching game. <laughs> Gets very emotional. It's one of the many, many, many reasons why I absolutely love this game. And thank you for sticking around. If you need to head out and then come check out the VOD later, please feel free. There was a stone carving on the wall of that pit. It gave me some sort of vision. I saw what happened to this place. Are you sure it was an auto suggestion? We talked about the mine a lot today. I to know, Neeks. You weren't down there. Yumi and Tabby had like simultaneous seizures next to a creepy stone carving it was like something out of a movie just because they passed out or had seizures doesn't mean it wasn't auto suggestion i saw something else down there like the shadows of dead miners they were right behind you before you left, and they followed us when we went after Becca and Alexis. Did you not see them? Whoa, I didn't see anything other than the two of you and that carving. That's super weird. I don't want to doubt what you experienced, but you were deep in a dark abandoned coal mine. You might have just been primed to see things. You know, now that I think about it, that totally fits the profile for some of the Tommyknocker stories. What if they're actual bona fide ghosts? Ah, oh, Stella. <laughs> Everything that happened down there centered around that main chamber where I saw that carving. Stella showed me a photo. Weird stuff. Me? Maybe you weren't entirely off base about the cult stuff you mentioned earlier today, but this thing felt old. Are you sure those were Tommy knockers? Depends on what you mean by sure. Is anyone really sure of anything? They fit the description pretty well, and I don't know what else they would be. Ugh, I have no idea what happened in there. I need to do some reading on mine collapses, I guess. I'm not going to pursue the reasoning of accusing them of abandoning me. What happens now? What happens now? We go home. Now hold on a minute, Miss Scarlet. Mind if we have a quick word with your cousin, miss? In private? 
Okay, fine. Just make it quick and don't you dare try and pull anything on her. She did nothing wrong here. Ladies, I'm afraid that means you too. Don't you need to talk to us? <laughs> we witnessed this too. Oh, sure. But that can wait. We know where to find y'all. What a coincidence, running into you two nights in a row. This is my colleague, Deputy Derrickson. Pleased to meet you, Yumi. Apologies for my absence yesterday. It was my special bowling night, you see. A man has to have his me time. But I was briefed on the events of last night, even though we're still not sure if what went on can be considered a crime. Duke has been missing since then, though we found neither hide nor hair of him. Could be he's just on an extended hunting trip. It wouldn't be the first time he's done something like that. I was told the footage showed his supposed body, but we couldn't get that camera working, so no way to confirm until we track him down. Now, I understand both of these were terribly unfortunate accidents that had nothing to do with you being in the area, but as officers of the law, you have to understand that we get a little suspicious if we see the same face multiple times in a row. And uh, we have to ask. What exactly were those teenagers doing in a shuttered mine owned by your family? And why were you down there with them? I'll get to your questions, but we need to have a talk about the man that's been stalking me. His name is Sam Wayne, and he used to work at the mines here. Well, that seems an awful lot like deflection to me. Wouldn't you say so, Earl? This is a nice town. People don't go about stalking strangers in these parts. You decide to drop it. Now, can you tell us what happened down there? We saw some teens sneak into an abandoned mine, so we went after them. We were just trying to do the right thing. Of course, of course, very noble of you. Pardon our questions, just trying to gather all the facts, you see. Just being thorough. Our duty as officers of the law. Well, if there's nothing more you can tell us, I suppose we'll let you go on with your evening but we may be in touch. Have a good one. Deputy Derrickson tips his hat to you. The two officers wander back towards the mine, Derrickson taking notes as they examine the scene. You make your way towards Stella and Kanika. I just can't believe two nights in a row. Is it my fault, Neeks? Stella, no, this is just an awful coincidence. It's not your fault. Oh, <laughs> hey, guess the cops are done with you. What are you gonna, what are, what are they gonna take you in for being present at an accident? Sorry, if they give you a hard time, small town cops, you know. Always blame everything on drifters, even acts of God, I guess. Excellent. You didn't get arrested. Now come on, let's go back to the estate. I'd like to get some rest before I have to deal with the fallout of everything that's happened tonight. I'll see you tomorrow, okay, Yumi? Excuse me, I... <sighs> Just stop trying to get my cousin killed, Stella. Come on, let's go. Tabitha starts walking to her car, pulling you by the arm. I'll text you when we're back. 
Tabitha doesn't say a word as the car cuts along the darkened road. You try to keep an eye on the surrounding wilderness as she drives, wary of what may lurk behind the tree line. I'm sorry about today. Tabitha doesn't answer. You drop it. Tabitha's eyes remain fixated on the road. Poor Rosalina. Poor Oscar. He should have kept a he should have kept tighter reins on that girl. I never got into any trouble like this when I was a teen. I have Pearl Ann to thank for that. Hated it at the time, but that strictness paid off. Ugh, what am I telling you this for? You can tell me stuff. I'd like to know more about you. And about Pearl Ann, for that matter. Maybe later this week. I don't have the energy to get into it right now. But I think I'd like that. You're right. There are a lot of adults who should have done a better job tonight. Exactly. People who aren't ready to be parents shouldn't be parents. And clearly there are some parents who aren't ready. Take Oscar. There are tons of people more qualified to be parents who can't even conceive. And here he is having a kid at 19 and clearly letting her do just whatever the hell she wants. And look where that got her. Even if she doesn't lose the leg, she's going to carry what happened tonight for the rest of her life. It's not fair. Some choices we can make here. Hmm. Oscar's house is haunted, Tabitha. I don't think it's fair to judge him. You don't know the whole story. Whatever. Why do you treat Stella like that? Didn't you two used to be friends? It was a different time in my life. I just wish she would get that we're not in high school anymore. I'm a different person than whoever she thinks she knows. How are you holding up? Poorly, but I'd really rather we didn't get into it. You and Kanika really don't seem to get along. She pushes my buttons. Is there some kind of history there, or...? No. Now quit talking. I need to focus on the road. Ride in silence. Your eyes wander back to the tree line as you and Tabitha slink back into silence. You once again cross the threshold into the estate, the musty stench of the decaying mansion greeting you with its undertones of mildew and wood rot. Well, this day was a lot more stressful than it needed to be, and I'm sure it's the precursor to a horrifically stressful week. I'm going to bed. I suggest you do the same. Thanks for calling me about those kids, by the way. It was unexpected. You could have... Ugh, no, you should have waited for me. Ugh, I'm too tired to argue. I'll see you in the morning. Tabitha turns and makes her way up the stairs, her posture defeated. You head up to your room to turn in. You collapse.
hearts in Tabitha's dusty guest bed, your head empty of thoughts. After your time in the Shaw Mine, you barely even notice the dust. Your phone buzzes on the table. Y'all, these are those things, right? Kanika sends a picture of a pair of ditchlings by the side of the road. I, I saw them again, too. Another picture, this time of them staring from a tree. What the fuck? These things are definitely not hairless monkeys or raccoons or whatever. I don't know what the hell they are. I guess there's more to them being here than the mine collapse. No way am I sleeping tonight. You think about looking out the guest room window, but at this point, you're too exhausted to leave your bed. The adrenaline from this evening is finally wearing off, replaced by a creeping exhaustion that threatens to overwhelm you. Your limbs feel heavy, your eyelids slipping down over your eyes even as you stare down at the ominous pictures on your phone. If it weren't for the pit of dread bawling in your stomach, you would almost feel comfortable as you settle in between the covers, your tired bones sinking into the decrepit mattress. When you close your eyes, you see Rosalina's face twisted with pain, staring up at you with tear-streaked cheeks. Trapped by powers beyond her control, terrified of what her now uncertain future would hold. Your eyes shoot back open, your heart pounding as the door to your room swings open. Just the cat. It's always just the cat. Don't read into this. The woman kicked me out. Just want a warm place to sleep. It's nice to see another living being, even one as unfriendly as Tabitha's cat. The comfort of her presence sets your mind at ease, and you finally slip into a deep sleep. This is the end of episode two. Episode three awaits. Proceed if you dare. And with that, that concludes my first live stream of this game. <laughs> I had uh, pre-recorded the first video um, just so that I could make sure I got sound things right, but I think it worked out pretty okay for the stream. And it was nice to have the live commentary and to see you all enjoy. <laughs> Oh my word, I am obsessed with this game. I have played it so many times. There are many, many different ways that this chapter can turn out, depending on which traits you pick and which choices you make. And everything continues to carry on into future chapters. At some point in the near future, I would love to continue playing this. You all got to hear me <laughs> get pretty excited about uh, narrating this game. <laughs> 
I absolutely adore this game. It is absolutely wonderful. Um, you also got to hear some rare uh, swearing from me. Um, that's kind of a funny thing I haven't talked about on stream. Um, I try to keep my swearing to a minimum when I'm streaming. Um, not for the reason that you would think. Um, when I start swearing, uh, it kind of, it's like slipping into um, uh, my native language. I just can't stop. <laughs> um, it just becomes a flavoring particle. Um, <laughs> at some point, maybe, if I ever have a tipsy stream, um, it will definitely come out and you will hear me swearing every other word, so... <laughs> So anyway, <laughs> this was wonderful. I am so happy I was finally able to play this game. <laughs> ah, this is fantastic. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Thank you all so much for joining me. This game is delightful. It was a ton of fun. I made that um, fun pre-recorded intro. <laughs> which was great. I'm really happy that that ended up working out pretty well. Um, I think I timed it pretty well with opening up the game as well. So, oh, this was great. Um, definitely a longer stream. I'm just looking at the time. I think I've been streaming for almost four hours. I feel like time just goes by so fast when I play this game. <laughs> no, and don't worry, if you didn't have a chance to catch up, hey, you've got this. And if uh, you're interested in the story, the first chapter is really good as well. Um, if you're interested in the game, I mean, I could talk over and over and over about how much I love this game. Um, the first episode, the one that I originally made a video about, is completely free. Like, it's straight up free on Steam. So if you're interested, you can always check it out. This is not sponsored, by the way. I'm just obsessed with this game. <laughs> Um, I think if you want to buy the subsequent chapters, like, to support the developers, it's like, ooh. I'm not sure if they do like good conversions with currencies, but I know where I'm at. It's a little over 20 bucks and that's for this one. Episode three and then four actually came out a couple months ago. So <sighs> this is good. <laughs> I'm so glad that you all got to join me as we delved into some spooky Appalachian horror. Um, a lot of it was definitely a slow burn, but I love that stuff. Oh, it's so good. But yeah, no. <laughs> you all have an absolutely wonderful rest of your evening. Um, have a great rest of your morning. Have a great rest of your afternoon, depending on where you're at. It's actually almost, uh, it's almost 11 p.m. where I'm at, so... <laughs> I think it's anime time. I'm gonna go make a bunch of popcorn, go have some anime, um, and yeah, it's gonna be good. <laughs> I'm glad that it's good to hear my cheerful voice <laughs> alongside this dark theme. Oh no, it's 1 a.m. for some of you. Oh my word, it's gotta be super late for, oh gosh. I hope no one's watching from the EU. I'm so sorry if it's so late there. I know some of you in the EU and the Middle East and Africa, it's so late. Oh my gosh. Yeah, please get some rest. You can check out the VOD later. And yeah, we will definitely be streaming this game again in the future. So you all have a fantastic rest of your day and I will see you all soon. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>